being here for the fourth straight year. They said they have to make their fans who have traveled the eight hours from Huntington proud. Thank you, Holly. This is the fourth straight time they have been here. Weather outside is looking like that. A lot of snow in the Detroit area. Very snowy December. It is 21 chilly degrees. And that does not count the wind chill factor. They're calling it flurries. That looks like full bore snow to me. Of course, inside it is perfect. Rick Minter bringing his team to a bowl game for the first time since 1997. His background as a defensive coordinator, defensive coordinator he now calls offensive plays for Cincinnati. And Bob Pruitt for Marshall, what a job he has done there in his fifth season, his very first year in 96. All he did was take them to a perfect 15 and a record and yes every time there has been a mac championship game bob pruitt's marshall team has won it byron leftwich is the sophomore sensation taking over for chad pennington who is now with the new york jets they expect great things from him and byron leftwich don mcpherson a guy that his head coach really really likes bob pruitt says this guy can be every bit if not better than chad pennington that's a big big call because Chad Pennington was a tremendous quarterback for Marshall but this kid left which has the size and stands about 6'5", 6'6", strong arm, big physical kid and when you stand next to him without the uniform you can tell he's young he still has baby fat and spots he's going to grow into that body and be a tremendous player kind of a Dante Culpepper kind of body he's uh, listed as 6'5", probably more 6'6", and yes a lot of folks have made the trip from Huntington, West Virginia it has become an annual rite of Christmas time for these folks to be here. And they did distribute all 8,000 of their allotted tickets, about the same expected from Cincinnati. Deontay, Kenter, or Deontay Kenner is the senior quarterback for the Bearcats. And he is a focused kid. He knows this is his chance. He's a senior. He has to make people stand up and notice. When you look at the quarterback in Dallas, right, and you look at, excuse me, right down in New Orleans and the, and the Dallas quarterback, these guys in the NFL, you wonder, where do they come from? Well, Deontay Kenner is that type of quarterback. He's going to come out of nowhere, and people are going to see him here today. Anthony Wright doing good things in Dallas, and of course, uh, Aaron Brooks in New Orleans. A couple of pretty good young quarterbacks. There Jason go. Mamarelli is the guy, the kickoff specialist for Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincinnati won the toss but deferred, so Marshall, wearing their all green, will get the football first. Darius Watts, number 40, a very exciting freshman, is back along with Curtis Jones. And we are ready for kickoff in the fourth annual Motor City Bowl. Jones fields it just at the goal line. He will bring it out. And Jones is stopped just past the 12 by Anthony Thomas. So Byron Leftwich, Capitol Heights, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C., will run this Marshall offense. He has a lot of weapons that he will use. Both teams like to use wide receivers. Darius Watts is uh, that freshman sensation. Oh, boy, he can flat out fly. And it's just rare that a freshman gets to break into this veteran wide receiver core for Marshall. So Marshall gets the football first. Watts and Foy are wide receivers to the left. There are three receivers in the single back. is Franklin Wallace, and he gets it right off the bat, and Wallace picks up about five. Let's take a look at the guys who will be blocking for Byron Leftwich and company. Steve Shulo, though only a sophomore, considered to be the leader of this O-line. He is from Pittsburgh. And this is a line that had some injuries during the beginning of the season, so they, they're just starting to play and gel as a unit. Right. Eight offensive linemen at various times were out with injuries. And a surprise starter, Greg Lee, going instead of Antoine Peak. And Antoine Peak was probably out peaking late one night this week, and, and he doesn't get to start. So keep an eye on Greg Lee and to see how long he remains in the ballgame. We do expect to see much of Peak, but he did not get to start. He is a senior. Second and four, Leftwich out of the shotgun, finds his receiver, that is David Foy. Foy, the senior from Charleston, West Virginia, picks up a first down. Troy Evans was among those on the stop. And speaking of Troy Evans, his is a great story. He came in as a walk-on and in four years has gone from being a walk-on to a senior. Senior captain at that. And in the secondary, Gary Ruff, one of the guys to look at at strong safety. Gary Ruff is the key to this secondary. They've had some injuries. He has to come up and play the run as well as get in the secondary and play the pass. And they were short of the first down. It is third and two now. Again, out of the shotgun. Wallace gets 
gets it. As he attempts to run for the first down, it will be very close. Greg Lee, the senior starter instead of Antoine Peek, coming up to make the stop, and they're not even going to measure. It is a first down for the Thundering Herd. Franklin Wallace, actually a great story, is uh, the running back had to deal with some injury situations. He was fourth string at the start of the season with Wallace, but now is number one. And Wallace now lined up in the backfield with Greg Kellett, technically a tight end, but we'll see him in a fullback position often. Leftwich, play action. Down the field, he has Watts. Watts breaks free, and he will score a touchdown. 77 yards, it doesn't take long. Cincinnati and the speed was so evident that as soon as he got the football, he just turned it off. They are Jenkins now in to add the extra point. And the senior gets it through cleanly. What a beginning for Darius Watts and Marshall. A 77-yard touchdown strike. Leftwich finds the freshman and the thundering murder up a touchdown. Selling brand in the automotive industry, Ford. Now please sit back with your family and enjoy a few hours of great football. You know, Ford has a long tradition of involvement with holiday football and the community. We're pleased that we've been able to send thousands of less fortunate children to the Motor City Bowl. It's just one of the many charitable efforts Ford and its employees are involved with this year. So from our family to yours, have a safe and happy holiday. We're in. The Motor City, Detroit, and Byron Leftwich hooking up a 77-yard touchdown pass to Darius Watts on the game's fourth play from scrimmage. It is not a Motor City Bowl record. That Randy Moss guy caught an 80-yarder from Chad Pennington in 1997. Jenkins kicking off for Marshall. Charles Spencer is deep, takes it one yard deep in the end zone. Pass to 20 and finally is brought down around the 31 by Gladstone Pope. Pretty good return there. Cincinnati. Sam, what Cincinnati tries to do on defense is force everything inside. You see Ivan Fields playing the outside on Watts, but Watts has the speed, once he gets a little separation, to maintain separation. And the ball was thrown on time by Leftwich, and Ivan Fields did not have a chance in the chase. Did not take long at all for Marshall. 212 and that 77-yard touchdown reception. Shooting up 77 of the 88 yards. DeMarco McCleskey is the single back starting instead of Ray Jackson for the second straight game. Cincinnati has four receivers, three of them to the left of Kenner. They give it to McCleskey, and McCleskey finds a lot of running room as he appears to have a first down. Danny Derricott coming up from his quarter position to make the stop. And there is Deontay Kenner, a senior quarterback. This is a ball club that won only three games last year, and Kenner has brought them here today. His backs and receivers, we mentioned McCleskey starting his fifth game, his fifth straight game. And it's a big start for him, obviously a big bowl game for him, but he's a guy who's been coming on strong at the end of the season, and that's why he gets the start. His second straight start, fifth overall. Tanner surveying his troops, going out of the shotgun, four wide receivers. Plenty of time for Kenner, and he gets it out to LaDarrick Van. And Van will get another first down. Two plays, two first downs for the Bearcats. Doug Hodges pushed them out of bounds. The guys up front for the Cincinnati Bearcats, all five of them come from the greater Cincinnati area. And they, their job, obviously, is to keep people up at Kenner, but they will be benefit. They will benefit from Kenner getting into the football on time. And the big defensive line for Marshall, Jimmy Parker, the old senior. Oh, he's, he's an old senior. He's a married guy. He has a kid. He's a guy who's playing right now for the money. He's playing for his family. Marco McCleskey now gets the handoff, and he pushes forward. A flag is down after a gain of two or three. And there is Jimmy Parker. He's married. 
Sun Mine Road, West Virginia, a town of about a dozen houses, give or take a couple. <laughs> Finally, he said his uh, family got a satellite dish. They did not even a place where you can get cable television. Right. He says it's not really a town, it's just a, a cluster of homes <laughs> in an area. And it is going to be a hold against Marshall and a clip against Cincinnati, offsetting penalties. And let's go back to our Beck starting lineup. Picking it up with the linebackers from Marshall, Max Yates is the uh, senior leader in the middle. And he is a ferocious player in the middle. He runs this defense. Smart guy, very athletic. And in the secondary, a couple of terrific corners in Hines and Derricott. Yeah, Hines and Derricott were the guys in, in the MAC championship game who were left pretty much on an island the entire game, and they shut down Western Michigan's passing attack on their own. Very two outstanding corners. They were ranked in the top ten preseason in secondary. And they certainly have lived up to that. And there is a look at Max Yates, who is the middle linebacker for Marshall. He's another married guy, Max Yates. There's a few married guys out there taking the plunge early. McCluskey, as we go to first and ten, is the long running back, and he gets the football. And he is up close to yet another Bearcat first down. Ralph Street with the tackle. McCluskey doing a nice job coming right at Yates, right in the middle of your screen. They're going to stretch this field wide. You see Weiner. Weinheimer get a, just a little bit on Yates. That's enough for McCluskey to stretch the field laterally and then cut up the field with his shoulder square. So it was officially a gain of nine. So second and one, Max Yates calling the defense. And he's definitely a smart guy, the kind of guy that you want right in the middle. Second and one for Cincinnati, trailing seven to nothing. Give it back to McCluskey, and he is cut down as soon as he cuts the football. Good penetration there. Paul Tobiesi, the senior from Alexandria, Virginia. And Doug Hodges also among those coming up to make the stop. Doug Hodges is a, a ferocious secondary player. He'll come up and, as they say, lay the bone to you. He, he comes up with a lot of heat. <laughs> guy did a lot of work in the weight room is Doug Hodges. Made himself into a very good player in the secondary. Cincinnati did not get the first down. Third and one. They can go to 39% of the time during the regular season. Two men in the backfield, the fullback Lloyd Garden, one of the rare appearances for him. They usually go with a single back set. McCleskey is piled up, but falls forward. Very, very close. Jimmy Parker, the senior nose tackle, clogging the middle for Marshall. And Pam, this is definitely not how either team was really expecting Cincinnati to come out offensively, running the football the way they are. Here it is, a fourth down. Big decision for Rick Minter right now. So two big stops oh, in a row by this Marshall defense, and Rick Minter, again, does call the offensive play. Uh, Pam, I love this call. Rick Minter is telling his team right now, we are here to establish ourselves as this is our house. And the Cincinnati faithful in front of us on their feet. About a length of the football to go. They give it to the fullback, Garden, and he gets it with plenty to spare. So how about that? An old defensive coordinator taking a chance on fourth down, and it pays off. Well, he's an old defensive coordinator. He knows how tough it is to stop. And he doesn't want his defense back on the field. Nice line surge. Once again, they're going over that left side with Murphy and Weinheimer. Two big physical offensive linemen. And Garden does the rest all on his own. He gets another five, six yards just on second and third effort. It was an eight-yard game. Makes it first and ten now for Cincinnati. Tenner again out of the shotgun. Avoids Max Yates and is forced to throw it out of bounds. Trying to get it to Ladarius Van. But Yates spoiled those plans coming in on the blitz. We mentioned that Cincinnati and Marshall both came in winners of five of their last six games. And it was indeed a terrific finish, and Cincinnati perfect at home at Gifford Stadium. In fact, he brought, brought a piece of it with him. Exactly right, which makes this game even a little more curious for these guys because it is essentially a road game, and they haven't played that well on the road all year. And they got their road wipes on as well. Second and ten now. Four wide receivers, nobody in the backfield but Kenner, and he is looking for Van, who somehow catches it. Right in between two Marshall defenders. 
A flag is down. Hey, Ladarius Van, though, I don't know how he made that catch. That's a 19-yard gain. I don't know how Minter, excuse me, how Kenneth decided to throw that ball. First down. Kids, don't try this at home. This man is well covered. Van is covered top to bottom, and somehow Kenneth throws it behind him, which allows Van just to hesitate just a slight bit and catch the ball behind the corner. Now Spartan Carter and Chris Crocker who were there, but really not there. Exactly. Picked up first and goal for Cincinnati. McCleskey with the dive, and he is in for the touchdown. What a terrific start. Marshall scores on its first possession with the long ball, and then Cincinnati puts it on the ground and guess what could be the equalizer. And this is called fluffy up. <laughs> McCleskey just gets in the air and carries just a tremendous effort by McCleskey. Fluffy up? Fluffy up. Did you have those? I used to have fluffy up. <laughs> now I'm more like an earthquake. Jonathan Ruffin, the Grocer award-winning kicker this year, gets the extra point. And DeMarco McCleskey, he is known as the guy who can do this. Sam Bam Cunningham, eat your heart out. McCleskey gets it into the end zone, and the Motor City Bowl is tied. Exclusive presentation of the 2000 Motor City Bowl is presented by Chrysler. We are reinventing the passion for driving. And in part by Bat, a beer of heart. And welcome back to Pontiac. We're about 20 miles north of downtown Detroit. Marco McCleskey going up and over go, for the tying touchdown. Cincinnati making its first bowl appearance since 1997 when they were in the Humanitarian Bowl. Ethan Mamorelli kicking it deep to Maurice Hines. Terrific punt returner as well as defensive back, and he got popped wow. by Lewis Carter. And Carter is pleased with himself. <laughs> well, he should be. <laughs> Good, he's got enough pads on there, and he uses all every bit of his head on Hines. Wow. So he fought off a, a block there. Looks like Watts was there trying to make the block, and Lewis Carter came in, made the pop, and he's a junior from Columbus, Ohio. So Marshall, with the touchdown in his first possession, same for Cincinnati. What about possession number two? Byron Wesley, and Wallace in the backfield. Changes yeah. things up at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go, he is sacked. Number 22, DeWan Gossett, coming up from his safety spot. And that's a big loss. Well, okay, Marshall invited that to happen. They came out with a two tight end set. And, and what that does is that brings everyone in the box. The two tight end set, here's Gossett right here. That brings everyone into the box. It allows Gossett to sneak up, read the play. He gets to go ahead. Once he's in the box, he, can, he gets to go ahead. He has no one to cover. He can do what he likes. He can shoot in there and go after left wing. And that's a free safety. Gossett, second in Cincinnati history in all time with 222 solo tackles. That was a nine-yard loss. So out of his own end zone, the pass is incomplete. Nate Poole unable to bring it in. And now a third and 19 facing the Thundering Herd. Antonio Davis, who was there bothering Poole. Oh, there's no question. Poole heard some footsteps. Davis right there in his face. He saw him coming. That's where the receiver goes, don't, don't throw it, don't throw it. And Davis, outside linebacker, splits time with Isaac Thomas. And Isaac plays almost an equal amount of plays. And it starts to get loud in the Silverdome. Tell it and Wallace in the backfield. Leslie goes out of the gun, and early movement looks like on the left side of the line for Marshall, but the pass is complete to Poole. It would be a first down. There is no, no flag. So up here, it looks like Steve Shulo might have gotten up a bit early. 
but it was not called. 24 yards on that huge third and 19 conversion. And I agree with you, Pam. It did look like Shulo just got off just a hair start there, and everyone kind of pulled up a little bit, and that kept the pass rush off of left, which is everyone thought that he was going to get called. Shulo was going to get called for the offside. Instead, it was a big gain on third and 19. David Foy, senior from Charleston, making the catch. Juan Gossett coming up to make the stop. That's an eight-yard gain for Marshall. And these wide receivers, you're going to see a lot of different guys making plays for them. Foy had a broken jaw, sideline him all of last season. He can play all five wide receiver positions for Marshall. Second and two, Wallace gets the handoff, and he is met at the line of scrimmage by a host of Bearcats. Eddie Johnson, the middle linebacker, leading the charge. A very special night in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mario Lemieux is back. He will be playing as he ends his retirement. And the NHL tonight will celebrate it with a special at 7 Eastern time tonight on ESPN2. Super Mario is back in the National Hockey League. He's 35. He can still play a little bit. I hope he does well. You, know, you always want to see a guy come back and do well after laying off for three years. That hockey is a tough sport to lay off for three years. Third and one, Marshall two for two on third downs, including a third and 19, but Kellett unable to bring in the pass from Byron Leftwich. So now fourth and one, we saw Cincinnati go on a fourth and one, but that was deep in Marshall territory. Let's we'll see what the decision is now. Curtis had the punter will indeed come in for Marshall. Looks like they thought about it a little bit, Don. Well, the difference is it's happening at the identical spot of Cincinnati's decision, the big thing is this is Marshall's side of the field. The smart call by Bob Pruitt not to go tit for tat and think, well, they went for it on fourth down. We're going to show them we're not afraid. It's a smart call by Bob Pruitt because you're on your side of the field. Sophomore Curtis Head now in for his first punt of the game from Shelbyville, Kentucky. A flag is down. Probably a delay of game call to expect. Uh, Pruitt recently signing a seven-year contract extension. He's got a steakhouse in downtown. I was about to say, was that a contract extension <laughs> on the steakhouse? Or <laughs> I think that lease is open-ended <laughs> on the steakhouse. It's doing very well out here. game. On the offense. Five yards. Still four down. So Bob Pruitt's team will take that delay of game penalty and the scoops back five more yards. Great little steakhouse. Right, right You've been there? The oh, yeah. Right in the hotel downtown, we were staying there. And where's the best place for a steak? You don't have a choice. You have to go to Pruitt's place. <laughs> Antonio Chapman is the lone back for Cincinnati, waiting to receive the punt. More discussions by our officiating crew. The referee is Joseph Ryder from the ACC. They're looking at the clock now, want to make sure that the game clock is correct. And Ryder apparently believes it is. So about two minutes after he came out on the field, I think Curtis had finally going to get a chance to punt the football. Ed, who is one? Chapman is going to watch it go out of bounds around the 23-yard line. A good roll on a 41-yard punt for Head. Marshall and Cincinnati tied up at the Motor City Bowl. They're coming up to make the stop, but not before McCleskey gained seven. And Pam, right now, Cincinnati has to feel very good about what they've done thus far in this ball game. They control the football with a nice long drive, using the using the run game, and being methodical and going down the field. And now they come out the second second possession and get an eight-yard gain, seven-yard gain on the first play. I like what they're doing with their offense. Second and three now. The Bearcats, three wide receivers to Kenner's right. What are we doing? Gives it right back to McCluskey. Jimmy Parker meets him, but Max Yates has to get the tackle low. That will be short of the first down. We mentioned at the open how both teams like to use a lot of wide receivers, but certainly more so with Cincinnati. You'll see them run the football more so than Marshall. So the one tape that I watched from Cincinnati this year, they, they spend a lot of time in the shotgun, and 
and not doing that either as much. They're showing the run for a run set with center under center and going straight at Marshall. They're expecting Marshall to be aggressive. They're going straight at him. Third and one. They call McCluskey's number again. And I don't think sure he got it. Very, very close to the first down marker, and indeed he did get it. Michael Owens made the stop, but McCluskey doing a lot of the work. Ray Jackson had been the starting running back. He was suspended for the final regular season game against Southern Miss. He is able to play today. He's not been suspended, but right now McCluskey has been the uh, one-man show in the backfield. The Cincinnati showing the confidence they have in their offensive line on these third and fourth and short plays. They're going right up the gut with the strength of their offensive line. Here we see the shotgun. But this time going deep and it is intercepted by Maurice Hines. And Hines, a terrific punt returner, showing his stuff on the interception return. Maurice Hines finally brought down after a 44-yard return. Wide receiver Robert Drury finally stopped him. just an underthrown football to Tim Walker, number 81. He has high speed. Again, Hines just turns his back. What's wrong with him? Walker has beat. Has him beat. The ball's underthrown. And then Hines, and you mentioned him as a punt returner. Look how strong his legs are. He's low to the ground. He's got that low center of gravity. That gives him the balance after all these hits to keep on moving down the field and truly makes the tackle to save what could have been a touchdown for Hines. Only the eighth interception thrown by Deontay Kenner this season. So it's first and ten now for Marshall left with double pump and then misfires looking for John Cooper. And both of these offenses doing, offense doing a good job of holding on to the football. Neither Leftwich nor Kenner throw a lot of interceptions. Leftwich off to that terrific start. 77 yards to Darius Watt for the touchdown. It gave Marshall the seven-point lead. Cincinnati tying it on a McCluskey touchdown leap. Another flag is down. Brenton Wallace all alone as he bust out, but he's going to have to come back and regroup. Ben, so often you see interceptions because of bad decisions by quarterbacks. As you get the call. On the offense. But that wasn't a bad decision by, by Kenner. I like what they've been doing with their offense. They're, they're being methodical in the middle. This, I'm talking about Cincinnati right now. They're being methodical with their offense in their run game. Take a shot to stretch the field. Take a shot to throw the ball deep. And that time, Walker did have Hines beat. It was just an underthrown football by Kenner that led to the interception. Certainly, we think it would be set up after all they were doing is giving it to McCleskey on virtually every play. No one in the backfield for Byron Leftwich. Looking now second and 15 out of the shotgun. Leftwich gets it to Wallace out of the backfield. And the running back who had 13 catches during the regular year picks up four. Now like Cincinnati, Marshall got off to a pretty bad start. They were two and four and won five of their last six games and they looked terrific at defeating prohibited favorite Western Michigan in that back final. And one of those losses that they had earlier on the season was to, to Western Michigan and they came back to beat them in the back final. But a key loss for Marshall was the Toledo game. It's something that I'll talk about a lot tonight is Toledo beat Marshall 42 to nothing. A team that I think deserves to be in a bowl game this year. John Cooper looks over the wrong shoulder as that left with pass falls incomplete. Well, Cooper got down the field and he started to improvise on his route. He looked like he was supposed to be running a corner route, and then he broke it back to the middle of the field. He gives the move to the corner. He looks over his, his outside shoulder, and then he turns back to the inside. And you see the ball come in, and that's when Leftwood saw him start to make that move to the outside. That's when he let it go. Look at the Thomas there with the coverage. I mentioned that Max title game. John Cooper is the, one, the guy who caught the game-winning touchdown pass in that game. J.R. Jenkins now in to attempt the field goal career and season long is a 44-yarder against Kent State. 
This one is from 51. It would be a new career high. Instead, it's a fake. But another penalty flag is down. Cincinnati fans getting excited because a Bearcat got his hands on the football. Back to the snap. Delayed game on the offense. Five yards. Still well, they'll, br they'll bring the punching unit on now to try to kick this into the corner. But Marshall's lucky because they didn't have a play downfield. Cowan, a backup wide receiver who's the holder, was the only one who was probably calling fire, fire, fire. But his guys going down the field didn't hear it because they weren't looking back to, to catch the football. So the second delay of game penalty against Marshall here in this first quarter. They will indeed punt the ball away. Antonio Chapman back deep with a Bearcat. Hurt his head. His first punt was for 41 yards, and he's at it again. among those down there killing the football. It is Capital One Bowl Week. More stuff coming up tomorrow at 4 Eastern Time. The Music City Bowl features Ole Miss and West Virginia. As Don Malum says goodbye as the head coach of the Mountaineers, at 7.30 Eastern Time, the Insight.com Bowl, Pittsburgh and Iowa State. That's all tomorrow on ESPN. ESPN and ESPN 2, your home college football on TV and on the Internet. Ray Jackson has indeed joined the Cincinnati backfield. The first time we have seen him today as Cincinnati deep in a hole, snapping the ball from their own one. Kenner gives it to Jackson and he will scoot forward for about a three yard gain. Kelvin Smith coming up for the tackle. And let's see, Don, if this indeed should have been a well, right on the one. There, it looked like his foot right there was on the line as he touched the ball back into the field of play. It was his left foot that just landed the line. And the foot is probably looking more at his hand than whether or not he actually touched the football. And that is a Marshall safety. George Miller and company converging on Ray Jackson. Michael Owens also in. So making that call even more huge. Wasn't a touchback. They got it on the one. And subsequently, Marshall gets the safety. Exactly right. These are two calls that right now Rick Minter can look at the offside penalty that happened with their left, with, with Marshall's left tackle. And now the play on the line, putting them in a hole. And there's Owens just going right over the block of Garden and making the tackle in the backfield. That's a huge play by Michael Owens. And he is known as a vicious hitter on this team, and he showed it here. So it's a safety for Marshall. So once again, a little controversy. You have to wonder, indeed, if it should have been a touchback. Well, here's the left foot right there. Here's the hand on the ball. That looks like it should be a touchback to me. And that's Willie Tisdale, number 27, who had his hand on the ball. Instead, they got it on the one, and Michael Owens making a huge play. His nickname is Kool-Aid. Very devout uh, Christian. He actually wants to be a gospel singer when he gets out of school. Well, he's in the right business right now because he has a chance to, to preach to these guys on the field, get them motivated, get them excited about something. Well, he came up very, very quickly from his defensive backfield spot to get that safety. Now, Jason Mamarelli is... Going to get the free kick. He decides to put it on the tee from the 20. Now, Mamarelli's the guy. Now, they have Jonathan Ruffin, who won the Grosser Award, but Mamarelli's the guy for long kicks. And he'll kick off. He's got the long leg. And you can see it right there as he kicks it back to Lanier Washington. Fields it at his 15. He's got a little bit of room on the left sideline and finally runs out of real estate. Mamarelli, the kicker, is the guy who pushed him out of bounds. And now some extra stuff near the Cincinnati bench. 
Michael Smith, the lone green shirt among a lot of white jerseys. Tisdale also among those in there, and Bob Pruitt obviously signaling for his guys to come over to the friendlier sideline. And Bob Pruitt's going to tear right into his players right now. Bob Pruitt's a class guy, so is Rick Minter. These guys know they come here to play good, hard, tough, clean football. He definitely doesn't like that kind of behavior out of his, out of his players. And he will make sure he, he will go over and, and, and let these guys know this is not the way we play football at Marshall or Cincinnati. And the official's going to discuss exactly how they want to sort it out. Joseph Ryder, the man in the white cap, is our referee. It's from Fort Myers, Florida, referees in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let's go down to Holly Rowe on the field. Guys, the attitude of both teams has been very fierce. From the very opening kickoff, a ton of pushing and shoving after the whistle, a lot of talking. And after this play right here on the bench, punches were thrown. I don't know if the officials can see it. What they have here is unsportsmanlike conduct against both ball clubs. So offsetting penalties is Cincinnati faithful. Obviously think it should have just gone against Marshall. Well, I think, I think it's a good call. Whenever you get a player from the Marshall team on the Cincinnati sideline, it's very dangerous. The guy's defending himself. It's a good call by the official. It sends a message to both teams that we're not going to tolerate it. Don't let it happen again because the second guy throws a punch, next time he's going to get thrown out. It's a good call by the official. Doesn't cost the team, either, either team a bit penalty right now. Ten wins for Cincinnati. Got into it early with Tisdale for Marshall. Well, now Bob Pruitt is saying, hey, that was my guy on their sideline. It should be against them. That's what Bob Pruitt's angry about. So instead of offsetting penalties, Marshall with that safety leading 9-7. They get the football right back. First down from their own 42. Leftwich gives it to Wallace, and he is met immediately at the line of scrimmage by Mario Mon. Number 90, Mario Mons, is the son of Wonderful Terrific Mons Jr., the brother of Wonderful Terrific Mons III, who played some minor league baseball in the Cincinnati Red system. And Mario was pretty wonderful and terrific there in the middle for Cincinnati. The loss on that play. So five receivers now in on a second and 13 for Marshall. Three of them to the right, and Byron Leftwich. He looks that way, and he gets Lanier Washington. And Washington moves forward for about a six-yard gain. Should bring up about a third and eight for the Thundering Herd. You still see some yapping down on the field between these two football teams. Troy Evans coming up to make the stop. That time Cincinnati got a little help on the play from Jeff Edwards, the Marshall center, who was coming out a little late and ran right into Washington forcing him to cut the ball back up the field where he really didn't want to go. So that does bring up the third and eight. Marshall two for four on third down so far in this football game as we are now under a minute in the first quarter and another flag. A lot of yellow laundry here in the first quarter of this game. Cincinnati players are cheering. Right to the snap, false start on the offense, five yards, still first down. And right now Marshall's looking, look, look, looking like the team that's in a ball game for the first time and Cincinnati's showing a little more poise after the, the ruckus. Second time that we've had a false start called against Marshall, also a couple of delay of game penalties and that pushes them back to third and 13. Wallace and Kellett. In the backfield for Marshall. Marshall does indeed have four penalties for 20 yards so far. Left with. Pumps and then goes the other side to Franklin Wallace out of the backfield. And he will be stopped at midfield short of the first down by cornerback Ivan Fields. The sophomore from Alabama. And we can talk about Byron Leftwich and his strong arm and his big size and his baby fat and Chad Pennington and all those things that makes him a good quarterback. But that decision, even though it, it leads to a punch, was a smart, big-time decision 
by Leftwood. He had nothing down the field. He chose to look down to his running back, Wallace, and drop the ball. That's a smart play by Byron Leftwood. And that will end the first quarter. A touchdown apiece for each side, and then a safety by the Marshall defense, given the thundering herd the 9-7 to seven lead over the Bearcats. First quarter in the book at the Motor City Bowl. The Winter X Games begin February 2nd. so much power gone into our battery introducing duracell ultra with new m3 technology it's the most powerful alkaline battery in the world this is a real mom and pop hardware store i think we have a nice family feel a couple of months ago we got a little bump in our car well we've been with our state farm agents for 26 years because I think he puts his personal self into it. Just like we do at the hardware store, he actually listens to what your needs are. It makes me feel pretty important. Get to know your State Farm agent. You can't put a price on a good relationship. The 2001 ESPN Information Please Sports Almanac has arrived. The most complete stats and information. Contributions from Chris Berman, Dan Patrick, and Stuart Scott. ESPN's 2001 Almanac. A great holiday gift in bookstores now. Welcome back to Motor City Bowl. Marshall with a 9-7 lead over Cincinnati. Moments ago, our Holly Road talked to Bob Pruitt about some of the pushing and shoving on the sideline. I just want to settle down, maintain your composure, put the pushing and shoving. Antonio Chapman deep for Cincinnati. Marshall actually had more total yards in the first quarter, 129 total yards to 77, but 77 yards of total offense coming on the touchdown play. Head kicks it out of bounds, so a short punt as it will be marked at the 22-yard line. That's only a 28-yard punt for Head. And there you see the yardage in favor of Marshall as well as the time of possession. Cincinnati had their first drive that run-oriented long first drive. Well, Marshall with 129 yards of offense, remember most of that came on the long play to watch, so they really haven't done that much offensively in this ball game. and Bob Pruitt's right. They need to settle down and get into their rhythm and start to play with a little bit more poise, especially on offense. 77 yards on that one play to watch. 77 yards of offense total for Cincinnati. Ray Jackson and Lloyd Garden lining up in the backfield behind Cincinnati's Deontay Kenner. Mm -hmm the all-time leader in total offense at Cincinnati. Hands it off to Jackson. And he will 
plunge forward for about a three yard gain. Max Gates making the stop from his middle linebacker position. It will be a special night in Pittsburgh. The Maple Leafs coming to town, but that's not why it's so special with all due respect to the Maple Leafs. <laughs> Mario Lemieux's playing. He is back from retirement. 7.30 Eastern time tonight on ESPN. You can watch the three-time Hart Trophy award winner come back. For more, log on to ESPN.com. That game will follow us on ESPN. Jackson guards in the backfield. Second and seven. They get it to Jackson, and he finds a nice hole up the middle, and he bursts through for the Bearcat first down. Chris Crocker making the stop after an 11-yard gain. And that time, Hodges is going to come on a blitz from the top left of your screen, and that's going to give once Jackson gets into the secondary, there's no one there. You see Miller, number 90, he's an outside linebacker who has to come all the way back to the middle of the field just to get into the, into the play against Ray Jackson. Jackson leading Russia with 808 yards during the regular season. He's a transfer from the University of Michigan. Got the first down and gets the football again. Nice cut inside, and he is finally brought down around the 43. Hodges, Doug Hodges making the stop. Eight-yard gain for Jackson, who did not start this ball game. He has four 100-yard games this season and was a first-team all-conference USA football player. And you see him stretching the field laterally again. We're talking about Cincinnati, how they stretch the field that way. That gives Jackson a chance to square his shoulders and come up the field. Ray Jackson, part of the Mac and Jack attack, <laughs> or Jack and Mac, if you ask Ray, apparently, exactly. depending on which guy you talk to, McCleskey or Jackson, they will put each other first. Jackson, the Jack of the Mac and Jack attack, gets another first down. Mac Yates making the stop. Eight-yard gain that time. I think we're going to have one of those uh, under the pile giving them the business calls. Jackson already with 29 yards rushing. Coming in after McCleskey started the football game. And it really is sort of a, become a running back by committee between those two guys for the Bearcats. And as we await yet another call. The Cincinnati a team that, that likes to spread the ball around. They use about eight or nine different receivers each game that they get the ball to. And, and this, so far this game they've been dominating up front with the run game. Penalties have been dominated in the game as well. Personal foul on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. The good news is they still get a first down. The bad news is they're pushed back 15 yards. So again, the officiating crew trying to put a stop to some of the some of the nonsense, some of the extra pushing and shoving in this game. I wish officials would go back to, you know, we have all the hand signals and the calls, and we know what they are. Go back to tell us what really happened. They're giving us the business part, I and mean, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> you want giving us the business yeah, that's, that's the great against goal. number 33. Or yeah, exactly. I'm going to pile giving them the business, you know. <laughs> that's how they were describing it to each other on the field, and then all of a sudden, you know, he gets on TV and he gets all well, official for that. By no means just a, a meager run-of-the-day personal foul. No, exactly. I always had a description of what happened. He poked him in the eye, you know, that kind of thing. Cincinnati has more first downs than Marshall. They trail at Ty Keith. Gets the reception over the middle for a gain of nine. One thing Deontay Kenna has to learn to do is put more touch on the football. It's something that he's learned as he has matured in the game. This time, he does it. He fires this ball, and that is a tremendous catch by Ty Keith. Not just the velocity of the football and how close it is, but here he is exposing his ribs over the middle with guys like Max Yates in, this, in the secondary there. You better touch that ball quickly and protect those ribs. And in his four-game winning streak, Ty Keith really has come into his own the top receiver the last four games for the Bearcats. Second and one. Jackson will be stopped short. Paul Tobiesi, the defensive end from Alexandria, Virginia, coming up. And Cincinnati got no surge that time on the offensive line. Tobiesi and company stalemating them right at the line. So that will bring up another third and short. Toby Essie, an interesting guy. His father is African. Has actually has four children who are going to graduate college within about a, a one-year period. Yeah, so he's going to be relieved in many ways. Not the kids out of <laughs> but a testament, obviously, for all the kids going to school and graduating. Third and one now. From Cincinnati. Kenner over the middle. Gets 
the first down reception to Ty Keith. So Keith, who was quiet in the first quarter, starting to assert himself here. Actually, it's Robert Drury, number eight, not number three, who made the stop. Let's go back down to the field and Holly Rowe. Hey guys, Deontay Kenner, as you said, has developed his touch over the last part of the season. The reason why, he went out with an abdominal muscle in one of their games, and while he was sitting out, he watched his backup, Adam Gruber, actually have a little touch on the ball. He saw what he was doing, learned from it, and he put that into practice when he got back on the field. It was almost like Gruber helped Kenner discover that he could indeed, indeed be a go-to guy. And Kenner has uh, continued that. He's also continuing to give the ball to Ray Jackson. And one thing that, that is important for, for quarterbacks to do sometimes, and for, unfortunately in college football when you're the starter, you, usually you're the go-to guy, is to sit back and watch another guy play. Watch the defense develop. Watch the different balls that a different guy will throw. And, and to definitely, that's what happened this year for Kenner. He learned from watching Hoover play. He learned from just sitting back and watching defenses defend the Cincinnati offense. And they are six and one in Cincinnati games in which Kenner was able to go the whole way. Kenner passing, and it is too high for Keith. Danny Derricott there with the coverage. Derricott, we talked about the two very good corners on this Marshall defense. He's continuing to talk. Derricott, a senior out of Ashland, Virginia, has three interceptions on the season. So, Pam, talking about Kenner and, and taking something off of the ball, throwing the ball with touch, when you're in the shotgun and when you throw the ball on time, as he says he tries to do, with his offense, throwing the ball on time. You saw that first down play in Drury. It's very difficult to get that ball in the shotgun and then throw with touch. It's really a reaction. You get the ball, you want to get rid of it quickly. It's hard to throw with touch when you're throwing it out of the shotgun like that. Kenner four of seven for 54 yards in a pick so far, and he gets another reception to Keith, and that will be a Bearcat first down. Derricott on the cover. Keith making a good, uh, good recovery to bring it in for an eight-yard gain. And Ross held the center that time, kind of dribbled one back to Kenner. Once again, showing that athletic ability that he has to scoop that ball up on the low snap and get rid of the ball quickly. And Ross felt certainly a, almost a quintessential Bearcat. Just about everybody in his family went there. His That's sister, right. mom, dad, three aunts, brother-in-law, his brother, cousin, and girlfriend go there now. The only one to be a Bearcat. He was the guy who took that bell when they beat Miami of Ohio for the bell. They said he took it into the shower with him. He wanted to win it in the shower. That time, a good snap back to Kenner. And he throws it to no one in particular, Jason Collins Baker, among those in the vicinity of that errant throw. Michael Owens among those with the good coverage for Marshall. Well, that was just a, a miscommunication. Not necessarily miscommunication between Collins Baker and Kenner, but, but both of those guys reading something different in the defense. It's not something that they necessarily uh, communicate to one another that, that Collins Baker is going to go deep or, or go short, but it's something that they see in the defense and have to make a decision, and they both read it differently. And another good drive for Cincinnati. They've already gone 44 yards in about five minutes. Jackson, a little shake and bake, and he's able to pick up a couple where really there was no, nothing there originally. Michael Owens making the stop after a great fake of Pardon Carter for Ray Jackson. Well, as Harden Carter, who came off of the coverage in the secondary, to force Jackson back inside. Kind of came in, made the, made the play, but also got juked a little bit on the play. It is going to be third and eight now for Cincinnati. Uh, a timeout is taken on the field. Marshall takes it, their first of this first half. And give Rick Venter an opportunity to talk things over with his quarterback. They're facing a big third and eight when we come back. It's not what you do for a living. It's what you live to do. Introducing the all-new Ford Escape. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries.
There is a better way to have fun. Put our city ball Pam Ward and Don McPherson. We're in the dome here. It's snow outside, but it's, it's good it's here. It's beautiful inside. No jacket. It's a great <laughs> ball game so far. Not like what we expected out of, out of either team. We expect them also to come out being a little bit more aggressive, and Cincinnati's really been the one that's, that's taken it to them. And Cincinnati has converted two third downs on this drive, trying to make it three for three on third and eight. Kenner with three wide receivers out of the gun. Flips it up to himself, and he is buried by George Miller. So an errant snap again by Rothfeld, second on this drive. Actually, we'll check and see if it was more the snap or the snappy, the guy who, who got it in Kenner. But give kudos to George Miller for really getting into the backfield quickly. That's exactly right. And that ball was just a little low, but not too bad. What happens when the ball is snapped low is the quarterback really doesn't want to take his eyes off of what's going on, on downfield. So sometimes he doesn't concentrate on the ball. He tries to dictate or determine where the ball is going to land. And that's how I think Kenner just kept his eyes up to it. Adam Wolfram. Sees this punt go into the end zone. That will be a touchback for Marshall, but we have another flag on the field. That last sack, by the way, only the 16th time a Cincinnati quarterback has been sacked this year. We talked about that veteran offensive line as Bob Pruitt again voices his disapproval with his officiating crew. Another call that's going to go against his Thunder and Hurts. Offside on the defense. Five yards. Repeat fourth down. So Wolfick will get another opportunity to punt and threw it literally stopping his foot. Like a, like a parent who just can't believe what he's seeing. Exactly. And I don't mean to laugh at you, Bob, but that's just a great reaction. If, if he could get in the heads of his defensive players right now and get them to be more disciplined, he would. He just stomps on the ground. Hopefully he'll, they'll feel him stomping. So Wolfick, the junior from Mitchell, Kentucky, will have another opportunity, hopefully, obviously, for him not to put it into the end zone. We'll try to scooch it in. You see that Detroit Lions helmet that has been Lions emblem skewered at midfield, rather clumsily, I think one could say. Wolfick's punt is not in the end zone this time. Let's see where they mark it. You know, they're going to mark it about the 12 and a half yard line. So that worked out better for Cincinnati, but not a good thing for them. A 14 play drive, but they still had to punt it away, and they're down. Leading 9 7 on a safety that uh, isn't as controversial as we made it sound. Now. Yeah, and going back to the first quarter, we said that this was, or should have been called a safety because his foot was in the end zone. But the rule is, as long as the ball doesn't cross the plane, it's not a touchback. So we were wrong, and I was wrong, and I will take responsibility for that. I'm not wrong very often, Pat. No, that's amazing. Well, mark it down. Exactly. In the NFL, though, that would have been a touchback. Exactly. And I thought, you know, because we were here in Pontiac and in the pro stadium that they call it that way. You know. no. But we do get more flags on the field. That, by the way, was Cincinnati's second safety of this season that they had given up. Marshall's second safety that they obtained, a false start against the Bearcats. Or against Marshall, excuse me. And you think he feels like stomping his foot again? Yeah, he's not happy. All these little chippy five-yard penalties and, starting to add up. And you know what the chippy five-yard penalties mean? It means that his team is not focused. They're not disciplined. That's what a chippy five-yard penalty means. It means you're making mental errors. And Scott Pettit, the tight end that time, was the one with the mental error. It's a good penalty on the Marshall offense. Three procedures or motions and then two delay of game. They're going to reset the play clock right now. That's the third time they've had to do this so far in the football game. Rick Minner doing a terrific job the last couple of years. This is a team that won three football games last year, two of the year before, and now they're in a bowl game. So it's first and 15 for Marshall. Franklin Wallace gets the football, a little head fake. He is stopped just short of the 15-yard line by middle linebacker Eddie Johnson. It's a seven-yard gain for Franklin. And unlike Cincinnati, which has gone with the Jack and Mac shows, Marshall just sticking with that single back, the sophomore from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Franklin Wallace. Their leading rusher with only 555 yards coming in, which just accentuates what, how much they like to put that puppy up in the air. 
second and seven. Westwick looks downfield. Troy Evans knocks it into the hands of Zach Norton. So Evans with the deflection, and the senior co-captain is fired up. Each quarterback is throwing an interception this afternoon. And we talked about throwing the ball with some touch on it. That time, Leftwich, he's a big kid, has a big arm, but that time he just needs to put some air under the football and not try, try to drill it. He has plenty of room to throw the football into this space of the field out here. There's plenty of room just to loft the ball out there. Instead, he puts it on the line, and that gives Evans a chance to get a hand on it. That's only the 10th interception thrown by Leftwich, which is incredible. He had nine and 457 attempts coming in. McCleskey now is back in the backfield. He fumbles it, but it goes out of bounds, and Cincinnati will retain possession. Sam, when a quarterback reads the, the field and he knows where he has to put the football, who he's throwing it to, sometimes he can just throw the ball out there to a spot and let his receiver run to it. That time, and especially when he has a guy like Watts who has the speed to go to an area, that time he put the ball on the line and it was an easy play for Evans to get his hand on it. And then the interception by the freshman, Zach Norton, giving Cincinnati good field position, now second and six on the 30. Lesky again as another flag is down. McCleskey barrels forward for maybe a yard or two. Max Yates coming in to make the stop. Seen a lot of these officials so far today. One thing about a bowl game is that these teams might be a little rusty. Maybe that's why you've seen these. Offside on the defense. Pesky penalties, but Still second you know, down. they're all on one side of the football. They're all against Marshall. <laughs> you wonder you know, what these guys have been doing since the championship game, and they've lost their rhythm. And Cincinnati is a team that has thrived on turnovers, particularly in the last four games where they've gotten 20 of them, and you see the way that they have improved on is unbelievable since they got their defensive coordinator back, Rick Smith. Yeah, and Rick Smith is an aggressive guy, and Minter likes the way Rick Smith coaches his defense, he, he's an aggressive guy by nature, and his defense takes on that same attitude, and, and they coach it, they teach it. He wants his team every practice to get two turnovers every single practice. If not, they run. He spends it to do so. Second and one now. Kenner, another flag is down. Play action. He is pulled over from behind by Ralph Street, the junior from Mims, Florida, wreaking havoc, but Another play, another flag. And this time it's going to go against the Bearcats. Seven penalties already have been called against Marshall. They only average a little over six, so they're already over their game average. And we have seven minutes and ten seconds left to go in the first half. That one was an illegal shift against Cincinnati. Illegal shift. Two men moving to snap on the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. And you can do that in the Canadian football league, right? You oh, put everybody can't in motion. motion. Everybody in motion. <laughs> everybody except for the center. In the, in the <laughs> CFL, it can go in motion. But here, you have to have everyone set. If you have two guys going in motion at the same time, one of them, actually both of them, have to be set for a full second before another one can move. And the two teams are running now for nine penalties. Second and six from the 30 to Cincinnati. Throwing this game by two. Another play action. Kenner rolling and throws way too high, going for his tight end, Ashley Hunt. Tight end's not used a lot in this offense. Hunt just 18 catches on the season. And that may be a little proof that Kenner doesn't have that touch thing down just, <laughs> just yet. He's trying to take something off, but it's hard to tell who he was throwing that ball to. So that brings up another big third down for Cincinnati. They've held on to the ball for much of the second quarter, a lot of the first of it as well, and had nothing to show for it. They scored their touchdown on the very first drive of the game. Five defensive backs in for Marshall. And another whistle, another clock issue. 
here in Pontiac. That looks like it could be a delay of game penalty against Cincinnati. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the offense. Wide receiver lined up in the zone. Five yards, still third down. Encroachment by the offense. Don? Well, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> Because as long as the ball is not snapped, the wide receiver can get, he can he can go into the secondary if he wants before the snap of the ball as long so as he gets back. As long as he gets back. That's the tenth penalty of the game. Seven against Marshall, three against Cincinnati. And now it's third and eleven from the 35 for the Bearcats. Four receivers in for Cincinnati center, giving some manual instructions. safety position and gets the sack. Four Marshall players and Kenner had no shot. And this is the Marshall defense that Cincinnati expected to come out from the very beginning. Aggressive, aggressive defense. This is what they did against Western Michigan in the second Western Michigan game. Right here is Owens. You can see him come off the blitz. He's going to come right up his man. And he gets a little bit of help from the guys, Tobiesi and the guys in the middle. Boy, did he ever. Owens is the guy also who got the safety for Marshall, and now he has a sack. Wolfeck in to punt, skies it. It will go out of bounds. They're going to mark it just short of the 20-yard line. So Cincinnati is eating up a lot of the clock, but they're not scoring any points. The thundering herd up by a safety. Exclusive presentation of the 2000 Motor City Bowl is presented by Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. And in part by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And welcome back to the Motor City Bowl. Marshall with a 9-7 lead and the football. Three wide receivers in this David Foy in motion. Left which though gives it to Franklin Wallace. Wallace, two hands on the football, gets the first down. Troy Evans with the stop. That time at the point of attack, Greg Keller, the tight end, with a tremendous block. Just giving Wallace a hole there off tackle. Keller, the junior from Columbia, Maryland. Quite a few of these players from Marshall from the Washington, D.C. area. Bob Pruitt used to be a high school coach. Broke in Northern Virginia and still has a nice pipeline there. Just getting guys like Keller. Columbia, between Washington and Baltimore. Give it right back to number 24, and Wallace bounces off the would-be tackler and finally is shoved out of bounds to the 38-yard line of Cincinnati. Anthony Thomas gets him. Dewan Gossett didn't. You won't believe this time, but the other flag is down. <laughs> this, is, this is getting a little ridiculous. Wow, and that was really a terrific play by Wallace bouncing off of people and you get a chop block it looks like hard to see that where that occurred looking wow. at, at the moves that Wallace is making it's a nice run and a nice bounce off of Gossett who just didn't wrap up but as Marshall has struggled with illegal block below the waist on the offense back towards the ball 15 yards receive first down i tell you where I don't want to be, and that's in the locker room with this man, Bob Pruitt. And just looking in the middle of the field, it's hard to see where the chop block is. I just didn't see anyone go down. And that could be it right there. And Watt downfield. Watt the freshman. Down the field, you're not allowed to go below the way. That is Brandon Carey now in as Wallace gets a blow and he gets a few yards on first and long. Gallery Furniture Houston Bowl coming up. ESPN 2, Capital One Bowl Week continuing with that. 8 Eastern time on ESPN 2. East Carolina Pirates, led by quarterback David Garrard, battle the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. That's on ESPN 2 this evening at 8 Eastern time. 
your home for college football. East Carolina, of course, another conference USA team. There were four two USA teams that got into ball six of the nine were ball eligible. A very competitive league conference USA. We had a chance to beat East Carolina earlier this year. Some good football in the conference. Brandon Carey unable to gather in that pass. Juan Gossett on the coverage. Carey is coming in now to spell Wallace. He is also a sophomore like Wallace. He is from Bridge City, Louisiana. Was for a spring early this year, but then had some knee and ankle problems that relegated him and gave Wallace the opportunity to take over. So that shot clock really hurting Marshall. It's third and 14. Marshall converting two of five so far. Five with five defensive backs in for Cincinnati. Four receivers, we've got five receivers for Marshall, and Leslie decides to take a timeout. So Byron Leftwich and Marshall trying to get things on track with their offense. We'll be back in Pontiac. So after the timeout, Marshall coming out in a three receiver set all to the right of Byron Leftwich on a third and 14. Leftwich, no time, the ball is stripped away. And Cincinnati gets it. Another huge turnover. Antoine Pink recovering for the Bearcats. And we talked on about how they do that in the drills. Keith Willis is their defensive line coach. And I know Rick Minter gives him a lot of credit for teaching this stuff. Exactly right. He teaches him if that quarterback's arm is in the move, is, is, is in, the, in the throwing motion, just take a swipe at it. The right side of the line for... Marshall are backups. That time they're right, their starters on the right side were not in the ball game. And Antoine Peake, the guy we talked about early in the ball game who didn't get the start, is the guy who just bull rushes over the right side and gets a swipe at left with and the ball, and he gets the ball. And Antoine Peake is only a sophomore, leading his team with eight and a half sacks, gets that huge turnover there. So it's first down for Cincinnati from the 21. Give it to McCleskey. Owens can't corral him. He steps inside. Yates finally with the stop around the 10-yard line. Nifty footwork there by McCleskey. Looks like he will have the first down, and he does. And that turnover, turnaround is exactly what it is, especially here in the last four games. And, of course, not coincidentally, they won all four. And when defensive players learn that they can make things happen, doing things like Antoine Peek on that last play, getting a hand on the football, they get hungry for it. And they start to do it more and more. They know that I might not get there with the pass rush, but I can take a swipe at this point that can and get that ball out. Peek was, was recruited as a wide receiver, and he's turned into a very, very good defensive end. So first down to the Bearcats. McCluskey, he has some room that quickly closes down as he bowls forward to the six. Let's go down to Holland. Don, you mentioned that Cincinnati has to get turnovers in practice. Well, they have to get them in a game, too. Unless they get three turnovers a game, they have to run on Monday. And they don't care if it is the holidays. The coaching staff on the bench, every time they come over to the field, are screaming at their players, go out and get one. They have encouraged this in the very first kickoff of this game. Every time the players come to the bench, paying off with two turnovers already. So how you, you talk to so many coaches and they say, oh no, we don't coach that stuff. We don't think about those things. But here's a Cincinnati team that coaches it. And if you're watching at home and you're a coach, you can coach turnovers. Second down, McCluskey goes forward and he stops short of the goal line. George Miller, Max Yates, among those dragging him down. Yates has five tackles already this afternoon. And Yates is a solid player in the middle. He sits his way through this defense. Makes a clean tackle, but credit McCluskey for dragging him for a couple extra yards. It's a good play by Yates to get there, but McCluskey kept his feet moving and brought it down to the one. Yates is one of the married players for Marshall, right? Tamika has a little boy, Micah, who was born in September of 99. Third and in inches now, and just outside the one for the Bearcats to try to take the lead. In the backfield, McCluskey is bottled up. You know, Cincinnati had just too many guys in the backfield. By the time that McCluskey got the ball, he had two guys in front of him. He had no place to go. 
take some of those guys out of the backfield, let your offensive line do the blocking. You got too many guys in front of them. Well, it still yeah. certainly was bunched up. Well, you had no place to go. And they was indeed short, so it's now fourth down. Cincinnati, remember, went for a fourth down earlier today and made it. And they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Kenner with the pick. McCluskey will walk into the end zone, and the Bearcats have taken the lead. on top 13 to 9 and now we see Jonathan Ruffin for the second time he had the extra point after the first McCluskey touchdown wearing number 76 in honor of the late Lou Groza. Ruffin is a sophomore winning the Groza award earlier this year and in Jonathan Ruffin like fashion he puts it through. So it took a while for the Bearcats they've had some good field position good drive but finally, they get the touchdown, and DeMarco McCluskey has both of them. They lead Marshall 14-9. to nine. Plenty more bowls get to go over the next week or so, including the Sugar Bowl, the Nikita Sugar Bowl, coming your way Tuesday, January 2nd, 8 Eastern Time on ABC. Santana Moss and the Hurricanes blow into New Orleans to take on the Duke Furriers, Gators of Florida, ABC Sports, the home of the Bowl Championship Series. You can see the Sugar Bowl on Tuesday night. Should Miami be in the big one now? You know, a lot of people oh, think so. you're going to get me going crazy about the DCS and all those crazy things. I definitely think Miami should be in that game. If they beat Florida State. Now, Marshall has been here four straight times. Cincinnati, on the other hand, not exactly what one would call a huge bowl history. They went to the Humanitarian Bowl and won in 1997. Then you have to go all the way back to the Sun Bowl. They've been there twice. And the Glass Bowl, they beat Toledo in Toledo. <laughs> 1949. I mean, come way on. back in 1949. That's, a, that's, a, that's ancient bowl history. I didn't even know they were playing bowls that, <laughs> that far back in Cincinnati. And there's, there's a good shot of roughing wearing the jersey and the number of Lou Groza. A terrific tribute. He called Groza's wife to ask permission. And she obviously was touched. It was a great gesture by this young sophomore who never played soccer. He said he just was a football player. He liked to kick the football, and boy, did he do it well. And he's one of the leaders on this Cincinnati team. 26 field goals out of 29 attempts for him, but not the big leg. Jason Mamarelli, who's his old fishing buddy, their good friend, Mamarelli, is the long kick specialist. He gets the kick off the way, and it's taken by Maurice Hines, who will take a knee about four yards deep in the end zone. So Marshall will take over at the 20. We have another flag to sort out. Have some players, uh, again, have discussions. We'll get some discussion now from Chris Fowler. Well, Pam and Don coming up at halftime. We'll have some news. A top junior headed for the NFL draft. We'll look back at the highlights so far of bowl week and a preview of another conference USA team, East Carolina, and their bowl game tonight against Texas Tech. Rod Gilmore joins me at the half. Thank you, Chris. And yes, more CUSA football coming up tonight on ESPN2. Ken Wynn going to be called for the hold on this play. You know, you, Pam, you talk about Rick Minter being a defensive coach calling offensive plays. If you go back to that touchdown, what a brilliant play call to run the option when everyone is expecting you with the full house backfield to run that power game that they've been running all game long. On the receiving team, during the kick, penalty is declined. The touchback, first down. So Marshall will get it on the 20. Joe Daniels technically still the offensive coordinator for Cincinnati. He sits upstairs and is in communication with Minter, but Minter calls the play. And it was a brilliant, a brilliant play call to run the option down there in that situation. And that's exactly why McCluskey was allowed to just walk into the end zone because Marshall just was not expecting them to go to the corner with the option. The four wide receivers now in for Marshall, who now find themselves trailing in this game. We're down to a minute 44 left and a penalty play for a catch. And Pete looked like he was offside. And meanwhile, the pass is picked off. 
Johnson, the middle linebacker. We'll have to see if it stands. I don't think it will. It looks clearly that Keith was offside. Keith was definitely offside. They're going to call it and going to bring this interception back. So Keith, a little bit too aggressive on this play. Offside. And it will be defense. Five yards, still first down. The gate the interception and the gate what would have been the third turnover of the game so they wouldn't have to run and that picture right there says it all <laughs> just real quick peek right here you're gonna see him jump off it's very clear he oops <laughs> offside he's also is a backup coach player of the cincinnati bearcat basketball team they do expect him to dress for tomorrow's game against unc wilmington they expect him to dress back home in cincinnati <laughs> coach hug yeah. Bob Huggins expecting him to dress. I want to face him down low the night after a bowl game. Because <laughs> he's more of a defensive than rebounder kind of guy. Yeah. I guess you could expect that. Leftwood airs it out, and that one is kicked away <laughs> by Dewan Gossett. But that falls harmlessly to the turf. So Leftwich, again, only nine interceptions during the regular year, is uh, getting his passes touched a lot by guys on the wrong side of the football. Well, th it was not really sure from this angle where he was throwing the football who he was throwing it to but once again throwing the ball deep and on the line he has to learn to put some air into the football to give his receivers a chance to run underneath it Terry Watt number 40 was the closest receiver to the football second and five now for Marshall continuing to go out of the shotgun and now Leftwich decides to change it up all the way for Lanier Washington he finds him and then it falls incomplete the left would see something he liked there on the right side but Washington covered nicely by Zach Norton unable to bring it in yeah well, well credit Zach Norton that time for the strip that ball should should have been caught it was put right in the breadbasket of Washington and then Zach Norton just gets his hand in there actually no he doesn't this ball was a flat out bounce right off the chest of Washington so that will go down as another incompletion for us with four straight incompletions. He's 7 of 15 with a touchdown and an interception. Third and five for Marshall. Leftwich over the middle and it's picked away at the line. Incomplete. Big Mario Mon getting his big mitt on that one. Big, he's 6'4", 330. Look at huh? that big fella right there. <laughs> you know, if you don't get in there on the pass rush, get a hand in the air. That big man was barely out of the stance. He said, that was me. That was me. That's right. Is this fluffy up? Oh, no. These are no up. He just, he just <laughs> gets a hand up. He barely got his hand over his head. All those pads and everything else he has on him. They teach those guys, if you don't get through in the pass rush, get your hands in the air. Curtis Head back in the punt. His fourth of the afternoon. As always, Antonio Chapman, the lone punt is on the standing at his 45. Gets it away, and Chapman has to be free. Picks it up around the 23. And he will go down around the 33 yard line. Another flag is down on the field. Nancy Satterwhite among those. After a 52 yard punt, right now it's going down as a 13 yard return for Chapman. And that was a smart play by Chapman to scoop that ball up and, and try to get some positive yards out of it. Unfortunately, he's going to get the, the hole tall here. It's going to push them back a little further. <laughs> Coach Bob tells us it's going back. A lot of penalties in this one, but a 97, not so. The Motor City Bowl, first play from scrimmage for Marshall. Chad Pennington, do you know who? That is the Motor City Bowl record, an 80-yard touchdown pass to Randy Moss. Not much has changed for Randy Moss, has it? He's still doing those kind of things in a bowl right the road in Minnesota. Marshall, the lost that game, on this scored with 31 seconds left, and that is the only loss. Coming back with two straight wins over Louisville and Brigham Young, respectively. Lavelle Edwards, actually his last bowl game, turned into that loss oh, yeah. last year right here in Pontiac. Oh, yeah. So that penalty pushes Cincinnati back to its 19. Ray Jackson is the running back for the Bearcats. With a minute 19 left to go in the first half. Coming around from his end position is Van. And Van is engulfed. 
Paul's Toby Essi coming up from his right end position to save the stop. Mario Lemieux is back. Still owns a part of the team, and now he's skating for him again. Mario Lemieux, 35 years old, back from retirement. His first game tonight in Pittsburgh. And you can see a special at 7 Eastern time on ESPN2. The game follows us at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, how do you get Mario? How do you, if Mario's not playing well, who, who pulls him? No one's going to pull him out of the game. He owns the team. <laughs> Another flag is down, and it looks like there were 12 Cincinnati players on the field. Two tight ends, Ashley Hunt and J.R. Deathridge. The non-two tight ends. The offense broke the huddle with 12 men. Five yards, still second down. Now, one of the arguments against Bowles, and there were many, is you have this big layoff. Is that, Don, you think part of this? It's just been very sloppy, little little silly things like 12 guys in a huddle, a lot of penalties. You know, it, it has been sloppy. There's been 14 penalties. I, I think some of these penalties, like the, the encroachment on the offense, is nitpicking by these officials. You know, you have to let these guys play. Yes, there's a month layoff, but you know what? These guys get into it after a couple of series, and both teams have to settle down right now. I think the officials have to let them play. Tanner looking all the way for Chapman. He gets him. Michael Owens pushes him out of bounds, but not before Chapman gets the gate up around the 28-yard line. Cincinnati stopping the clock here, seeing if they can add on to this five-point lead. The Cincinnati defense coming up big after, really, you take that one play away, Don, that 77-yard touchdown strike to Watts, and it's been all Cincinnati. It, it really has, and, and you're, you're going to expect in the second half that something's got to give, either... Either Cincinnati's going to start putting up some points because of all this, or Marshall's going to realize that they're lucky enough to be in the ball game as close as it is now, despite being on the on the sideline with their offense for most of the first half. And something's going to give in the second half, and, and this game's either going, to, either going to get blown up and wide by Cincinnati, or Marshall's going to make a game of it. We'll see if Chapman had enough for the first down. Looks like it is a little bit short, and it is about that much. So Bob Pruitt's team now facing a third and one, and there's the toe yards. And Marshall, again, 77 of those 131 passing yards came on that one play, the touchdown to Watts on their very first possession. And, and looking at the other side of the ball, Cincinnati has been balanced with their offense. 90 yards in the rush, 70 in the pass. It's been a nice attack by, and, and, and again, something that's, Marshall probably didn't expect Cincinnati to come out and run the football as effectively as they have. There's a good look at Byron Leftwich, the sophomore, who still very often talks with his predecessor, Chad Pennington. He credits Pennington with helping to teach him football. And Leftwich still has two more years left at Marshall. Cincinnati, three of seven on third down. This is a third and inches play upcoming. Makes it himself for the first down. Harden Carter making the stop, but not before. Kenner gets the first. A minute one left here in the first half. Andrew Hurd, these guys got here on Christmas Eve. Cincinnati's been here since a week ago today, the 20th, in part because they wanted to practice inside, which of course they could do here. They do not have an indoor facility at Cincinnati. Well, if you don't practice indoors and you don't play on a flat surface, there are some things to get used to, and it's obviously paid off for Cincinnati. Kenner, disconnecting on that pass play. Jackson coming out of the backfield. George Miller, the linebacker, doing a nice job of staying with Jackson. And I'm a little curious why Cincinnati doesn't have more of a hurry-up tone right now. They came on the field with more than a, a minute and a half left in this half, and they had a chance to at least move the football. They've done an effective job so far moving the ball up and down the field. Get yourself in space in, and give your, your kicker, either Mamarelli or Ruffin, the Lou Groza Award winner, a shot at giving you three before the half. And remember, Cincinnati still has all three of its first down shots. Plenty of time downfield, and he finds Jason Collins Baker for the first down. So Collins Baker, a senior, has become sort of a forgotten man in this offense. Cincinnati finally calls its first down, its first timeout. Jason Collins Baker gets the 22-yard gain and a first down. And that's the kind of play I expected them to come out with a little bit earlier in this drive to start to move the ball down the football field. 
And there's Jonathan Ruffin. Will we see him get an opportunity to kick a field goal? We'll come back. Cincinnati with the football trying to add on. Jonathan Ruffin wearing 76 for Lou Groza instead of his customary 16. And there is the long guy, Jason Mamarelli, who is warming up. Mamarelli kicked a 47-yard field goal with no time left to beat Syracuse of all teams earlier this year. 46-yarder forced overtime against Wisconsin, a game they ultimately lost. And the other one was from 45 yards out. Three for three on the season. over around 42 we can look for him Kenner looking for and finding Chapman who gets another first down for the Bearcats now a little bit of the urgency in the offense with 24 seconds left Kenner takes another timeout that was a 20 yard game Chapman and the good thing about college football is the ball is the clock stops on a first down so you can throw that ball over the middle even though they do have the timeouts left you can throw that ball over the middle because the clock will stop and now that they get a little bit closer, Ruffin starts to warm up. They're getting in Jonathan Ruffin's range. And he won the award, the Groza Award, a few weeks ago. Let's take a look. I would like to introduce the winner of the 2000 Lou Groza Award, Jonathan Ruffin from the University of Cincinnati. And there is Jonathan Ruffin, co-MVP of this team only as a sophomore, and Cincinnati's first ever consensus All-American. Yeah, you know, I look at him under that helmet, and he looks like he's about 12 years old. <laughs> he's wearing number 76, and he looks like a little league football player there, like a little offensive lineman on this 12-year-old and up team. He doesn't kick like a 12-year-old, though. He certainly does not. And that 76 looks like it barely fits on his jersey. <laughs> That's right. It's kind of wrapping around towards his back. And a nice guy. We had a chance to chat with him a little bit yesterday. And oh, what a class act to wear number 76 for, for Lou Groza. And Jonathan pointed it out that of all the stories he heard, it was not just that he was a great football player, but a great man as well. Which is certainly more important. First and 10 from the 27, Kenner steps up and Chapman unable to get it but a flag down as Barakot got a little bit too close. Look at Chapman happy with that. And Kenner had Glick coming in his face and went the opposite way knowing that there was no help in the middle of the field. What a nice first down. Kenner knows he has zero coverage to the middle of the field, so Chapman is working towards the middle, and Derrickott gets that hand on the jersey. Don't you pull that, that back of that jersey and extend that shirt like that. And this extends the drive. First and 10 now from the 17 with 20 seconds left to go. Cincinnati still with one timeout. There are 15 penalties between these two teams, nine of them against Marshall. Kenner. Rolls to his right where he had three receivers looking in the end zone. Hodges gets his hands on it, but the pass falls incomplete once again. Chapman was back there, as was Jason Collins Baker. Oh, everybody was back there. I'm surprised Bob Pruitt wasn't back there. He <laughs> had no business throwing this football. This football to Collins Baker, who was just had people in every direction. There's Miller. There's Hodges. He's got people everywhere. Hodges the one who gets a hand on the football. There's more green shirts back there. I mean, it looked like the, the, the celebration at the Masters, all those green shirts back there. <laughs> Michael Owens also was back there. Getting good job by George Miller, a linebacker, staying with these fast receivers. Second and 10 now from the 17. Three wide receivers to the right. Kenner throws it, and Chris Crocker almost got himself an interception. And boy, he would have gone a long way. Oh, he had six points on his mind, and he knows it right now. And that time, Kenner just held on to that football way too long. It gets tipped a little bit, but you know what? <laughs> Crocker had a beat on that football, and if he gets his hands on that, he's gone. Crocker, only a sophomore, had 
four, uh, three interceptions make that on the season, and it is indeed Jonathan Ruffin time, career-long 46. This will be a 34-yarder. Well within Ruffin's range. And the snap is an errant one. And Ruffin forced to fall on the football. So another bad snap for Cincinnati, this time on special teams. Josh Snaderoff is the snapper, and that will end, fittingly, a sloppy first half here in Pontiac. So the Bearcats, two, DeMarco McCluskey touchdown, taking the 14-9 lead over Marshall at the half. Well, let's go back to Chris has played well. He is a sophomore, as is Byron Leftwich, his first year in charge of this Marshall football team. And Deontay Kenner, the senior for Cincinnati, as his team has taken the lead. And you take a look, the play is 19 more for Cincinnati, and the time of possession almost nine minutes more as well for the Bearcats. Yeah, there's no question about it. This is the key set right here. 19 minutes, 19 and a half minutes by Cincinnati controlling the football. That is going to be the difference. Of course, first downs is an indicator that they've been holding onto the ball and moving the football. You know, if, they're, if these people are outside, what are the chances of them having a nutty buddy? I would say... That's definitely not a nutty buddy. None. But it's ice cream weather inside. Cincinnati with the lead at the half. It's here, waiting for you. Inside is unlimited strength and power. It builds confidence and reshapes your body. It can change everything. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy-to-use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance, all in the convenience of your own home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Bowflex is real. The results are real. The question is, are you ready for Bowflex? For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research. Listen to real customers. Then place your order online and get started. Bowflex. Who said change isn't easy? General Motors has a long-term commitment to the advancement of sports across genders and at all levels. Participation in the Motor City Bowl continues this strong support within our hometown community. General Motors is proud to be associated with the enthusiasm and spirit of the Motor City Bowl during this holiday season. Daimler Chrysler is proud to be part of the Motor City Bowl team and join them in their commitment to metropolitan Detroit. Having the opportunity to send thousands of kids from the Detroit area to a great college bowl game provides an extra touch of Motor City Bowl holiday spirit for the employees who produce Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge cars and trucks. Thanks for joining us today, and a Happy New Year to everyone from Daimler Chrysler. As you might expect, all the uh, motor companies have been heavily involved in the Motor City Bowl. Cincinnati leading at the half, 14 to 9. Let's go down to the third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Thanks, Sam. The coaches told me at halftime, particularly Rick Minter for Cincinnati, that he was frustrated with the game speed in the first half. He said, I can tell we haven't played for 39 days. The repetitions weren't there. He said, we haven't had a snap mix up like that all year on offense. And he told his kids that they have to settle down and play good execution football. And Bobby Pruitt for Marshall said that he told his kids to get out of the mental and verbal war. He said, those guys are getting in our heads, talking to our players, and we're letting them. They're taking us out of our game plan. He wants his kids to come out, play Marshall football, and ignore what Cincinnati is saying. All right, Holly, thank you. And there is uh, Schneideroff, the long snapper who did mess up that uh, field goal attempt. It was a bad snap, and this is a team that leads the country in field goals. 26 of them off the foot of Jonathan Ruffin alone, and Schneideroff with the bad snap. It's the last play of the second half. Byron Leftwich, not Byron Leftwich-like numbers, certainly. The one interception, only his 10th on the season. The one touchdown, a 77-yarder on their first drive, the fourth play of scrimmage for Marshall. They are Jenkins ready to kick it off here in the second half. Charles Spencer fields it in his end zone about three yards deep. He will bring it out. 
he will bring it out to about the 17-yard line. Tarpley among those down to help make the stop, as was Sam Goins. And Spencer regretting that decision. Instead of the touchback starting at the 20, they're going to start at the 17-yard line. Deontay Kenner's numbers, also not horribly impressive. He has the touchdown and the pick as well. But definitely the team winning the time of possession. 15 first downs to only four for Marshall in the entire first half. Well, Rick Minter and Holly Reporter said it wants to get that tempo back. That was almost a two-hour first half. The both teams need to pick up the tempo and pick up the pace a little bit. And the very first play of the second half, that's a backward pass, goes out of bounds, though, harmlessly. John Olinger unable to hang on to it. He is a sophomore out of Hazard, Kentucky. I don't think Olinger had that sense that that was a backward pass. He kept on jogging and didn't chase the football. But fortunately for Cincinnati, it went out of bounds, and therefore was a, a harmless play. So now second and ten. Ray Jackson in the backfield. We saw both Jack and Mac, actually McCleskey, the Mac part of the Jack and Mac tandem is starting. McCleskey in the first half had 58 yards running. So now second and ten for the Bearcats. McCleskey gets it and he is met in the backfield by number 85, Paul Tobiesi. His fifth tackle of the afternoon. A lot of contact there. And Tobiesi's a big, kind of a long, lanky guy. He's not real big, but he's good at chasing down a play. And this time he comes, the point of attack is not directly out of him. So he has a chance to come slice in through the blocking. He stands about 6'7", so he's, he's long to get through those holes. Elementary education major. Yeah, he's going to scare those elementary school kids at 6'7". They're going to have a long way to look up at two. That's right. Four wide receivers and now third and ten from the 17 for Cincinnati on their first possession here of the second half. Kenner, time to throw this time. Looks to his left to Chapman and Hodges almost intercepted it. Boy, it hit Doug Hodges like right in the numbers and he will regret not picking that one off. And that's about the third interception that the Marshall defense has missed in the last two series. In the last two plays run by the Cincinnati offense in the first half should have been interceptions. This time Chapman just stopped running and Hodges had a, has a chance to make that pick. Chapman wasn't even looking. Hodges leading the team with five interceptions coming into this game. Adam Wolfett trying to get off his third punt. But another whistle and another flag. And what would the second half be if we didn't start off with a penalty? Joseph Ryder. Prior to the snap. Ball starts on the offense, five yards, still fourth down. So that time the penalty goes against Cincinnati. If you would like to see SportsCenter, just flip on over, one channel up, usually on most systems, right, Don? It is <laughs> ESPN, too. It is for me. It's, me at home. it's easy to keep track of, but if you want to see SportsCenter, ESPN, too, has it for you. As uh, we continue here with the Motor City Bowl on ESPN, Pam Ward, Don McPherson, and Holly Rowe. Happy to join you on this holiday week, this bowl week, from Pontiac, Michigan. So now Wolfick again tries to get off the punt. Chapman standing on his own 45. For Marshall. And they set Maurice Hines, the other number one. Wolfick barely gets it off, and it's a floater. Looks like maybe somebody got a hand on it, and it will be touched down around the 45, only a 30-yard punt for Adam Wolfeck. So Cincinnati stalls on its first drive here of the second half. Willie Tilltale, looks like he got a little hand on it. Marshall Ball, when we come back. Welcome back to the Motor City Bowl. Cincinnati with the 14-9 lead over Marshall. Marshall getting its first possession here of the second half. Starting out from the 42-yard line after a short punt from Adam Wolfett. Leftwich looking and finding John Cooper. The senior from Alexandria, Virginia, yet another kid from the Washington, D.C. area. Hard lover up to make the stop. we near Washington. Another wide receiver for Marshall. Off the pace of the line, still is not trying to step up the tempo a little bit. That's the game they like to play. High-powered offense, let's get it going. Stay at the line of scrimmage, keep the pressure on. Second and one now after that nine-yard gain. 
Westwood looking downfield, throwing to it, making the break perfectly, and then making the catch. Boy, Leftwich threw that right before Poole made his break. And Leftwich has been throwing the ball on a rope all day long. That time he was right on the money to Nate Poole. That is a 30-yard gain. And that's the post corner. And the ball has to be thrown on time. It's a long throw. And Nate Poole showing that concentration after his tip. Leftwich has to throw this ball on time because Poole starts to run out of real estate there on the corner. And he gives them plenty of time to make that decision because he's sure it's going to work. Only the second catch for Poole, who led his team with 70 catches coming into this game. First and goal. And they give it to Franklin Wallace, who gets close to the goal line, but not in. The officials will mark it just short. Mario Mond, the left tackle, and Troy Evans combining to stop Wallace just a little bit close. Well, it gets so close here in the line. And this is so close to Wallace getting in the end zone, but Gossett's the last man to get the hand on him. He's just stretched that ball to the line, and <laughs> all this scratching and kicking and clawing that goes on in there. A flag is down as a touchdown is scored by Byron Leftwich. Well, we got to check out the flag. Yeah, Bob Pruitt's not even reacting to these flags anymore. Offside on the defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. So Byron Leftwich scores the touchdown. Only his second rushing touchdown of the season. They like to use him a lot on third and short situations, little quarterback sneaks, but still just his second rushing touchdown of the year, and Marshall has regained the lead. It looks like they're going for two here. Pam, this game has a lot of, of the same feel as Marshall's season. Started off slow, and they start to come on at the end. It took them some time to get their identity during the season. Seems like the same thing is happening here tonight. In this game. And they are going for two. Marshall 0 for 2 going for this this season, both times on pass plays. Another pass play upcoming. Leftwich in the back of the end zone and Watts can't bring it in. Leftwich showed, showed good patience that time, waiting for Watts to, to get to an open spot in the corner of the end zone and back of the end zone. I know, and I have a little chart right here. If you're ahead by one, you go for two, but I don't like this this early in the game. I think you just get the point. Well, I think the, the coaches look at that shot because they know what happens later on in ball games. And, and I think it's a good call. Watts just has to come down with this pass right through his hand. Ball is thrown hard, but he's got to come down with that in a two-point two, two conversion. Spoken like a quarterback, Mr. Exactly. McPherson. Left with, though, is a terrific young sophomore quarterback. And Bob Pruitt talked about him as he replaced Chad Pennington this year. And I say that once a guy brings a team back at the end, the end of the ball game to win it, takes a team, and he did that three times. He did it at Bowling Green, he did it at Akron, and he did it in the championship game. So this is his team now. This is his uh, his fans, his program, you know, for the next two years. I think he's got uh, a chance to be as good as there's ever played in this league. And that is some statement, isn't it? That he could be the best quarterback ever. Guys like Pennington playing there. And it was a nice scoring drive. And again, a 30-yard pass play, helping to set that up. And Marshall has regained the lead. The slimmest of leads is 15 to 14. Charles Spencer is the deep man. And he takes it about a yard in. And he is stopped just short of the 15-yard line. Duran Smith making the stop. Let's go back down to the field and Holly Rowe. Pam, yesterday I asked Byron Leftwich what he thought about that, being considered one of the best that could ever play at Marshall, and if that was a lot of pressure. He said, you know, I can't think about it right now. I have to think about one completion at a time, improving every season, and leading my teammates. He doesn't want to think about it. He just wants to get the job done at hand, and if it works out, great. If not, he gave it all he had. Certainly showing some poise. He threw for 398 yards, a max title game record, two touchdowns and no interceptions in that come-from-behind win over Western Michigan that put Marshall in the Motor City Bowl for the fourth straight year. Cincinnati gets the ball back, and as is their custom, they run on first down. DeMarco McCleskey met by a big green wall. And one of the big green guys there, including Anthony Beckett, George Miller also coming up. 
Ralph Street, just a whole bunch of guys. And Pam, the run game was very kind to Cincinnati in the first half, but in the second half, they should not wait too long to abandon it and go to that high-powered pass attack that they have, that really brought them here. And I think that's the important point, that they can't wait too long to abandon this run game and start to throw that ball up in the air. That was a one-yard loss to McCluskey, now second and 11. They give it right back to McCluskey, and he has stopped Hodges making the shoestring grab. Five tackles for the senior from Miami. And this is exactly why they can't wait too long. Now they're in a third and long situ situation right now for the Marshall defense. And they've got all kinds of people here. And, and Hodges just hit the hand on a great tackle by Hodges. Now they're third and long. This is the time for the Marshall defense to pin their ears back and come hard. Cincinnati cannot allow themselves to get in the situation too often, especially on their own 15-yard line. Five defensive backs in there for Marshall on this third and ten. Kenner looking downfield, and he's got momentarily Todd Keith, but the ball is knocked away. Danny Derricott getting there. Looks like the ball floated just a little bit too long. And, you know, Derricott makes a great play on this, and Keith was wide open, but Keith was also distance wise about 60 yards from Kenner, who's throwing the ball from the right hash all the way across the field. I mean, this is a long throw out here. For him to make that ball in the air a long time, and that allows Derricott to make up the, the space that he lost on the post corner. A little bit underthrown. Wolfbeck ends the punt again. Maurice Hines fields it at his 44, and he is grabbed down from behind. Another shoestring tackle, this time from Ivan Field. Cornerback and also pretty good special team player. Deontay Kenner has now misfired on his last five passes. Marshall getting the football back when we return to Pontiac. Harrington faces the Longhorn Duel of Crimson Applewhite. Texas versus Oregon, December 29th at 8.30 on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Motor City Bowl is presented by the men and women of General Motors, whose commitment to quality brings you outstanding cars and trucks. scored on its very first possession of this half, just like it did in the first half. Now possession number two, the defender and herd up one on Cincinnati. Leslie changing it up again at the line of scrimmage with his four wide receivers. Looking all the way to his right, that's David Poole. Oh, David Poole breaks the tackle and then is knocked out of bounds at the 49-yard line of the Bearcats. David Four there with the catch. Gary Ruff coming up from his strong safety position to get him out of bounds. Ruff, one of several players from Los Angeles. As, uh, that was one place that they really wanted to recruit heavily after Cincinnati won only two games two years ago. They went to Los Angeles, got a lot of junior college players to come in, and that's one reason why they've had this big turnaround. It's an eight-yard game. Second and two now. Leftwich, once again to four. Just past the first down marker, so it should indeed be another first down for Marshall. Let's go back down to Holly Rowe. Standing by with the CEO of the Motor City Bowl, George Perlis. And Coach, you were a former coach at Michigan State. How great is it to have this kind of atmosphere in football back in the Midwest? I love it. This is, this is a dream come true for an old coach. You have no wins, no losses, and a lot of fun watching these kids play their hearts out and being involved. This is, I'm really enjoying myself. I think when people first heard about the Motor City Bowl, they thought Detroit in December, it'll be crazy, but it has turned out to be one of the good bowl games, and people really come and support you. Yes, they're doing a great job supporting. Of course, don't forget we have Ford, Jim, and Chrysler. That's pretty, pretty tall company. Well, thanks very much for joining us, and congratulations on another successful Motor City Bowl. Thank you very much. George Perlis, yep. well, and Scott, thank you, Holly, in this area, the former Michigan State head coach. Byron Leftwich turning a broken play into a 15-yard game there. Good look at Mr. Perlis. Well, he, and he is just one of the class guys in college football. And he just had a chance to visit with him a little bit yesterday, and he was one of my coaches in, the, in one of the all-star games in college. And just a class guy in college football. Meanwhile, another personal foul against Marshall for that 15-yard game, the improvisation by Leftwich. They're going the other way. And Pam, I want to forget about that penalty for a minute and talk about Byron Leftwich right now and, and what he showed in that last 
play and who he reminded me of him. As I watch the MAC championship game, and as I watch him tonight on the field, he reminds me of a young Randall Cunningham. He has that kind of athletic ability. He's tall. He's, he's, he's more built, actually, than Randall Cunningham was as a youngster. And, and, but he's tall, and he has that lanky, lanky delivery. But he also has the quick feet to elude tacklers and make a smart play. And it was a huge game right there. Unfortunately, the game is by the, by the penalty. But he showed that kind of ability for a tall kid. And it's funny, because Wesley kind of downplays his mobility and agility. But he certainly is no slouch in that area. Four wide receivers now. Leftwich gets it up to Darius Watts. And Watts will be just short of the first down, make it a nine-yard gain. Zach Norton making the play. <laughs> I tell you what, Darius Watts is going to be glad that ball was tipped because that ball was coming. Now he got tipped and it still got there on time. A lot of mustard on that one, Ooh. Darius Watts. I look at this ball. He gets tipped right there by Mons and still it flutters and gets there on time right, right in the numbers. Otherwise, it might have taken his stomach off. And on that second and short, that's going to be a first down carry. Leftwich on the quarterback sneak. You mentioned Leftwich. He is listed as 6'5", 230. And a lot of people think he's more like the 6'6", 240-ish or so range. Now, Dante Culpepper is a, is a monster. He's well over 260. Yeah. He says maybe down to 255 around this time of year, but he's a big guy. He's a big guy. And Dante Culpepper, I like him. Uh, uh, David Garrard at East Carolina to Dante Culpepper. And by the left, which to me looks a little bit more like Randall Cunningham because he has that kind of lanky body, but a good delivery and good feet. Dante certainly is a thick quarterback. Culpepper, Culpepper, Culpepper's not playing. Left which in trouble. Mario Mons, Antoine Pig pressuring him. And uh, left which wisely throws it out of bounds. And there's a good look again at Mr. Mons. Yeah, you call him Mr. Mons. He's listed as... 3.30. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what he, he's lying at 3.30. He, he was 3.30 maybe at the end of training camp for about a half a day. And then, then there was lunchtime. We're going to go out and take a break. Pam Ward, Don McPherson, and Holly Rowe joining you from Pontiac, Michigan. Snowing outside. Nice and close to the inside. Second and ten for Leftwich. Three receivers to his left. And one more to his right. Then he hands it off. To Wallace, Franklin Wallace somehow staying on his feet and getting it down to the 25, just short of the first down. But Franklin Wallace has shown some nimbleness himself. And you know, you know what I really look at is how Nate Poole reacted to that. As Nate Poole was, as Wallace was down the ground, Nate Poole was showing his excitement. And Wallace was so much in his own zone. Look at him taking on the hit by Gossett. And Adams and then Workman at the end of the play there. He did so much on his own, that gets his team pumped up. Very, very quick is the sophomore from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And then attempting to get the first down. And it is a first down. So Marshall continuing this drive as Leftwich gets his second first down of the series on little quarterback sneak. Then you get the sense that Marshall is sitting at the top of the hill and they're starting to play downhill. They're starting to play with more momentum, a little bit more purpose, more crisp in, in their passing game. Nice play at this drive. And that ball is delivered low to Watts. And Mons getting into it a little bit back at the line of scrimmage with, with Chulo. But nothing, no flag this time for a change. Watts doing a good job to go down and get that ball. Darius Watts is a guy who really made his mark as a freshman. And his offensive coordinator, Ed Zonbrecher, said he knew he'd be special from the very first day of practice. He's right. like, look at this, I got somebody. Because with so many seniors, they didn't even think they'd have to use it. But he played his way onto the field. Leftwich going deep, yeah. and a flag is down as now. Nate Poole falls to the turf. And as Gary Ruff was down there defending, Looks like he might be the one that they threw the flag against. Also, so Leftwich getting a little bit more aggressive on this drive, and they get the call. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Anthony Thomas also down there. Here's Nate Poole right here in the slot. He's going to be the one that's going to go to the corner and he's going to get harassed on his way 
He goes down, the ball's in the air. It's an easy call for the official. You'll and that was Gary Ruff who ran into him. Anthony Thomas was the other defensive back. So the pass interference penalty sets up a first and goal from the four for Marshall. Cincinnati still looking for its first first down of this half. Marshall already has more than it did in the entire first half. Yeah, and then Marshall's starting to play more aggressively on offense right now. got his team to settle down at halftime and start to play like the team that they believe they are. And I think this team is, a, again, a team that needs to get a little bit of confidence during the course of a ball game, and in this case, the course of the season, to start playing like the Marshall team of old. They are Jenkins in for the extra point. ground this year. Jenkins with the extra point, and Marshall extends its lead now to 22 to 14. Franklin Wallace with some nifty moves earlier, nifty stuff around the goal line as well. The thundering herd on top. And now they're starting to take over and say, this is our game, this is our stadium. They are Jenkins kicking it off. Charles Spencer has to retreat deep in his end zone. It lands about nine yards deep. And he will take a knee, and we have a little piece of yellow stuff on the turf here. Another flag. I thought you were talking yellow snow. Not enough yellow that, that flags. Oh my right goodness! Now. Yes, exactly. The flag fest, especially in the first half, and starting to continue now. Joseph Ryder, his family uh, watching at home. His holiday season <laughs> doesn't have to miss them because they've seen him a lot. That's right. Offside. On the kicking team, five yards, re kick. Well, that's a killer, too, Don, because that was a touchback, a terrific kickoff from Jenkins. Ariel Mew is indeed back officially tonight. He is again a National Hockey League player as Pittsburgh plays at home against Toronto. A special coming up at the top of the hour, NHL tonight, celebrates Mario's return to the ice. Catch it 7 Eastern time on ESPN. And one of Mario's players said one of the things that he wanted to do because Mario was still a part owner, was one of his first orders of business was get Mario drunk and then talk contract. <laughs> Did you get him loosened up and open like, sure. Yeah, he can't, he can't <laughs> hang out with the players like he used to. He just can't do it. So J.R. Jenkins, after a booming first kickoff, tries it again. He's giving it a good shot. He's giving it a good ride. Boy, a lot of body English on that, taken at the goal line by Spencer. And Spencer once again stops short at the 20. And his Marshall special team unit, that's Parkley, Terrence Parkley coming out with the stop. The officials do a good job there of separating the players. We did have a little uh, a little, in, uh, little incident in the first half, but Parkley covering that kick nicely. You have to say this is a good no call by the officials. Marshall, as I said, getting aggressive in every phase of the game, and that is a good no call by the officials. Pushing up against the face mask, but not grabbing it. Yeah, you, you got to let them play sometimes. These officials are throwing enough flags there. I think you just got to let them play. Cincinnati looking for its first first down of the second half, going to Ray Jackson now in the backfield. And Jackson, the transfer from Michigan, breaks free for a first down. Danny Derricott making the stop, but Jackson, known as more of a more of a north-south kind of runner, a little bit more flash with McCleskey, and he uses his power to get the first down. Yeah, and Cincinnati really needed to get a spark in the second half. You can see they've been minus five in their first possession and zero yards in the second, both resulting in punts, and they need to get this ball across the 50-yard line, start to get some momentum back offensively, and again, don't be afraid to go back to the pass game. Yeah, only down here by eight. First down. Back to Jackson, and he is bottled up in the backfield. Does a good job to initially get away, but Doug Hodges has played a heck of a game. That's his sixth tackle already. Doug Hodges is listed as a free safety, but he spent more time in that Cincinnati in that Cincinnati backfield. He has been very aggressive right there, bottom of the screen. He misses the tackle initially, but he keeps himself alive 
a good hustle by Hodges. Hodges is a guy who, obviously not that big, he's listed as 190 pounds in 5'7", or 5'9", excuse me, and they really think he's close to around 5'7". So a little guy who can pack a punch. Lost in the play, second and 12. Kenner looking downfield, and it's batted away at the line. He was trying to get it to J.R. Deathers, but Ralph Street got his hand on it. Street, the junior from Mims, Florida. Let's go back down to Holly on the field. Guys, the emotions are still high here. After that last tackle, Hodges from Marshall was warned by the referee to stop talking and pushing after the whistle. They're still trying to get things under control, but every single time the ball is down, these guys are going after it. It's, you think it was a rivalry game, the way they're acting here. Well, Marshall and Cincinnati, not exactly... A big rivalry. This is the ninth meeting ever. The last one was in 1946. Well, well before these guys were born and calling most of their parents with them. Kenner throwing behind his one receiver. But it's caught by Ty Keith. Murray was also out close to it. And another flag is down. The left flag was thrown from way, way back in the secondary. I think it is going to be a delay of game penalty. Either that or he's trying to do his I dream of genie. Delay of game on the offense. Five yards, still third down. So that negates what was a nice game to tie Keith. And there was only one official who, who saw it from way deep in the end zone. There was no whistle on the play. So that brings up a third and very long. Third and 17 for Cincinnati. Kenner with four wide receivers. Five defensive backs for the thundering herd. Kenner. Throwing into double coverage, it's over Hodges' head. Jason Collins Baker unable to grab it, and another flag is down. Now that did not look like that would have been catchable, regardless. But let's see what the uh, penalty is. Unhelpful pass receiver. Ten yards, automatic first down. Wow, a huge call. Ten yards, but automatic first down which is the biggest part of that play. I think that's going to be the hold right there. That seems Mike, to be the call on Collins Baker. Michael Owens going out of his jersey. So instead of the stop, there's a first down now for the Bearcats. We'll get the score here in the second half. And the Cincinnati fans have been silent. Now starting to cheer. Penalties done are just adding up. 21 between the two squads. They've made yet another call against Marshall. Unsportsmanlike conduct this time. And Holly talked about the talk to Bob Pruitt. And unsportsmanlike conduct there called against the bench of Marshall. Because Pruitt was trying to tell his players to calm down and to get their heads about him. But that one coming from the sideline. At this point in the ball game, as a player, you want your team to get fired up. Do not let these penalties bring you down. Do not let these the sloppy play and the calls that you think may go against you one way or another. Get fired up and get back in this ball game. Penalty count now up to 22, 13 of them against Marshall. First and 10 from the 49. Give it to Jackson, and he is met by Kobe Essie. All Kobe Essie coming up from behind after a short game. Ham, it's the team that does not get down by the slow play with these penalties, stopping the clock, and getting discouraged because you, especially with the emotional penalties, the unsportsmanlike conduct, the, the call against the bench. If a team allows that to get them down, then they will lose. It's the team that gets mad at, at these penalties and gets themselves fired up and continues to play with intensity that can maintain it and win a football game. Have you ever played in a game where there were this many penalties? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I played in games when 
you know, there's been fights and everything is stopping the clock and it's the team that lets the fights and all the penalties get them down and doesn't have the gas to make it the rest of the game. Second and seven, mix up in the backfield as Jackson just side away from Kenner who has to hit the curb. Ralph Street making the stop after the confusion. Tune in December 29th for All Day Bolorama on ESPN. Coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern Time. Colorado State taking on Louisville. Then LSU and Georgia Tech Friday at 5 Eastern Time. Follow that up with Texas and Oregon. That should be a beauty. The Ducks against the Longhorns. All that coming up Friday on ESPN. Uh, you and a lot of the guys here will be doing that Colorado State Louisville game. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a great day to be on the couch. It's going to be a great football. <laughs> that's a completion to Chapman for the first down, and Kenner found it. That's a 15 yard gain. So after the penalties now, Cincinnati's starting to click a little bit, even yeah. though Kenner was pressured on this play. Yeah, he, and he barely gets this, this ball off, and, and that just gets a little bit of tip, and, and Chapman makes a good catch adjusting to that good football but right now the only emotion on the cincinnati side of the football field is in the stand we are right above that fan and they're the ones right now because the bench seems kind of quiet right now marshall is taking advantage of that that anger and that emotion that's going on in the field and cincinnati seems to be coming down just a little bit first down play now is jackson throws in motion wide left that's where Kenner will throw it but he's going to be stopped for a loss backwards. Doug Hodges again making another big tackle. Well, Pat, when you send a guy backwards like that, what you're doing is you're setting up a screen that's called, uh, it's called a read screen. And what happens is if the secondary goes with the two wide receivers on that side, then you throw the screen. If they don't, then you throw the ball down the field. And this time, Marshall did a nice job of slow playing that screen. You see the guys coming, coming out here. They're not really going to play it very aggressively. And that forced a very long throw for Kenner. And again, Hodges comes up with a great open field tackle. It was a terrific uh, read by Hodges, who quickly jumped out to that side. So that one didn't work. So Marco McCluskey now in at running back position. Jackson takes the rest. Second and 17, and left seven on that play. Kenner, rolling right, looking left, and Orlando Washington grabs him. Marco McCluskey unable to bring it in. Boy, he just stopped that off. Boy, what a dangerous play that was to kind of put that ball out there. Orlando Washington, for a big guy, made a nice athletic move to get back and stay in Kenner's face. Washington. There's Washington all the way over here. He's going to come a long way to, to make this play and make that athletic move to stay in the face of Kenner. That off left-handed. That's Lanier Washington, the wide receiver. Not to be confused with Orlando Washington. <laughs> who's a big guy, another big guy. 6'2", 265. From West Virginia, another native West Virginian. There's a good look at Orlando. He was a running back in high school. A large one. Then yeah. was a defensive end and finally moved to defensive tackle. And he's sort of known as a guy who had a breakthrough game actually against BYU in last year's Motor City Bowl. Jason Collins Baker rattles it forward. That one is going to have to come back. The pass reception was good, but then he put it forward to look Darius Van. And with each play, Cincinnati is starting to play more like a desperate team. They're starting to make those kind of mistakes that you make when you start pressing. This is an unnecessary lateral. You're not in a desperate situation. There's still plenty of time in this ball game. You're not way out of it. This is an unnecessary play to pitch this ball forward. Maybe if there was two and a half minutes left to go in the fourth, but certainly not in the third. They're only a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying it. Absolutely right. They have to start playing with a little bit more discipline and not allow, again, they're, they're not playing with the same kind of fire they played with in the first half. You know, something that happens to teams when they play the ball game for the first pass. time. On the offense, five yards, lost it down, on the offense, lost it down. 
That's the big part. Yeah, that's the big part, the loss of Diamond. What happens to teams when they haven't been in a bowl game or this type of a big-time game is they, they come out strong, and they come out real strong in the first half, and that's what Cincinnati did, and then there's that letdown. How do you sustain it for 15 minutes? And they haven't been able to do that. They're starting to tail off. And with that loss of down, it's now 4th and 17. Adam Wolfeck again into punt. Maurice Hines standing on his 10. Wolfeck angling for the sidelines, and it will go out of bounds at the 14. And that is where Marshall will be taking over. ESPN Television has a lot of bowl coverage, so does ESPN Radio. You're home for the Bowl Championship Series January 1st through the 3rd. Starting up New Year's Day with the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, Purdue and Washington at 4.30 Eastern Time. January 2nd, the Makia Sugar Bowl at 8 Eastern. It's Florida and Miami. It's not also on January 3rd. It's the FedEx Orange Bowl as Oklahoma takes on Florida State. That's not right. <laughs> Get rid of it. Throw it out. <laughs> Here's Doug Hodges who played his heart out for Marshall. And now the offense takes over. Leftwick setting up the screen to Franklin Wallace. There's a couple of guys that he actually runs past. Kurt Thompson making the stop. Ivan Fields also coming up. And that will be a first down for Marshall. <laughs> Antonio Davis got double teamed by Hardy and Chulo and got Lamb bases. Oh my goodness. Steve Chulo, 6'6", 315 from Pittsburgh. Antonio Davis, discernibly smaller. <laughs> He's only 6'204". Leswick taking off. And wisely sliding down at around the 33-yard line. Antonio Davis coming up to make the stop on Leftwich. He's forcing him to slide. You know, when, you, when you're 6'5 or 6'6, six, six, it's hard to slide and get that big old body to slide on the football field. And Leftwich showing some brains and, and showing that he has the maturity, knowing when to slide. But it's tough to get 6'6 six, six on the ground like that. Not a big rushing quarterback. 82 attempts, 83 yards coming into this, of course, in college football. The stats take away from the rushing yardage. But he certainly can do some things with his feet and also can do it with his arm as he hits Nate Poole for another first down. Ivan Fields coming up to shove Poole out of bounds, but not before he got 11 yards. Let's take a look at our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter well-connected storyline. Marshall's offense coming out very well here in the second half, scoring 13 points in the third quarter, but boy, a lot of yellow flags, tons of penalties. And the Cincinnati offense... They got two touchdowns from DeMarco McCleskey, 4-0 this year when he does that. But they're going to have to come from behind to make it 5-0. Yes, they are. They're going to have to pick up the tempo a little bit. Right now, Marshall is starting to, to look like old Marshall team with that very powerful offensive attack. Wallace trying to get outside, and he's going to be stopped for a loss. Troy Evans, Dan Wortman, among those converging to make the stop. Franklin Wallace doing the lion's share of work. We saw Brandon Carey for a couple of carries in the first half, but it's been Franklin Wallace exclusively since. No gain officially on that. Second and ten. Leswick has Poole over the middle. He finds him. Another flag is down. As Poole, at least momentarily, has the first down, but it looks like it's going to be a holding penalty against the Marshall offensive line. Holding on the offense, personal foul on the defense, till he's offset, second down. Very fortunate call there for Marshall after the hold, another personal foul. That's a look at Eddie Johnson, the middle linebacker senior on this football team. And the Marshall fans were a little somnolent as well. Over on the, uh, on the what, what, what was that word? What kind of speaking? <laughs> <laughs> somnolent. Somnolent. Is that the word? No, well, no. I mean, hey, listen. 
I learned something new every day, and now you taught me one. I'm not going to try to say it. I'm saying what I'm saying is they're sitting down. <laughs> There's not a lot of anything on that side of the field. That was good. That was good. Well, I think the officials are taking it out of all of us with all these flags. Second and ten now. Leftwich trying to get things going, and he tries to find John Cooper, and it pounds off of his hand. A lot of touch on that one, and Leftwich gets up holding his right hand. Yeah, John Cooper has to come up with that ball because that was thrown on a rope on time. That was a big time throw by Leftwich. Unfortunately, he gets up holding his hand and, and still holding his hand. See if we can get a look at this. It looks like he gets it right on the helmet of Mond as he's coming in there and he's in a little bit of pain there. Big Mario Mond wreaking havoc. Now third and ten. Leftwich is going to stay in. He's eight of ten for 88 yards here in the second half and is going to take a timeout. Is perhaps, if nothing else, do try to catch his breath on that after that huge hit from Mon. Just 27 seconds left to go in the third quarter of the Motor City Bowl. Now for ESPN the magazine and get your sports the way it ought to be. Big and bold, fast and furious. Get 26 issues, a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. 66% off the newsstand price. And your free pullover is free. It's Chris Berman. He could go all the way! Call now. 1-800-814-1771. Back at the Motor City Bowl, Byron Leftwood shaking up, but after that timeout, he will stay in the game on a third and ten, and the Cincinnati fans on their feet, exhorting their crew for a big third down stop. That's a three of eight on third down so far. Leftwood looking for Watts. He takes off a lot of green in front of him, and he will run for the first down. A 19-yard gain for left with the one Gossett, pushing him out of bounds. And that fan said that's going to be what kills us, and he's exactly right. When Leftwich can make that kind of decision, he sees Gossett. See, Gossett's showing early here. He knows that it's man coverage because the free safety is making himself out of it. He sees people chasing that side of the field. He knows he has a full side of the field to work with on this play, and Gossett's the one who chases him out of bounds coming from the other side of the field. Leftwich picking up another first down with his feet. And that puts the ball inside the 40 now at the 38-yard line. Marshall scoring two touchdowns here in the second half to take a 22 to 14 lead. There was a failed two-point conversion. And both teams coming in red hot, winning five of their last six games. Marshall defeating Western Michigan in the MAC title game to get here. Westwood again calling things at the line. He has three wide receivers all to his right. And he has Gary Ruff right in the middle of there on the defense, showing blitz once again. He fires it. Cooper was in the area, as was Nate Poole. And that one falls incomplete. And Cincinnati starting to get a little more aggressive on defense. Bringing the secondary people up into the face of Leftwood causing him to make those types of decisions at the line of scrimmage. Boy, look at the total yards in the second half, Don. All Marshall. 55 to 23 after Cincinnati dominated the clock. And uh, first downs in the first half. And remember, it's about even for Marshall, but we were looking at Marshall's third quarter as opposed to the entire first half. Michael Wallace gets the ball and he's inside the 35-yard line. Derek Adams making the stop after a gain of four. That is the end of the third quarter. Marshall holding on to the football and looking to extend their lead. The Thundering Herd going to their third straight win at the Motor City Bowl in Pontiac. Leftwich doing it with his arm earlier in the game. ESPN 2001 Almanac. A great holiday gift in bookstores now. 7,000 times a day, 685 times an hour, once every six seconds, a GM owner puts their stamp of approval on the quality of our cars and trucks by coming back to buy another GM. It's the ultimate expression of loyalty. And to us, 
the ultimate compliment. My name's John Woolard. I rescue alligators for a living. John Woolard is one brave guy. It's pretty exciting. But would John Woolard ever insure his car with some kind of cut-rate car insurance? Cut-rate car insurance? I'm not that brave. When it comes to car insurance, why take a chance? Be like this State Farm customer and get an agent you can rely on, plus competitive rates. Go on now. Nestled within the ground floor of St. Sophie's Medical Center is the emergency room. At the ER, they can reattach a severed limb or resuscitate a flatliner in no time. But should you need the healing hands of the folks at the ER, pull out your Discover card. Because there's only one thing better than having St. Sophie save your life. Clear! And that's getting back cash for them to do it. <laughs> Some people like getting cash. The Discover card with cash back bonus to the slightly smarter consumer. How do you make more money? Simple. You get a better job. How do you get a better job? Easy. You train at home for a better career. At Harcourt Learning Direct, more than 11 million men and women have trained for job promotions and new careers without ever setting foot inside a classroom. And now, at home, in your spare time, you can get your career diploma or even your specialized associate degree from the Center for Degree Studies. Choose from any one of these courses. High school, home inspector, medical transcriptionist, auto mechanic, electrician, bookkeeping, medical office assistant, PC repair, private investigator, veterinary assistant, medical insurance clerk, motorcycle repair, PC specialist, paralegal, pharmacy technician, orchestra specialized associate degree from the Center for Degree Studies. You can major in business management or accounting. Call now for free information. Call 1-800-893-1020 for free information. That's 1-800-893-1020. Welcome back to the Motor City Bowl, where it has been all Marshall here in the second half. Deontay Kenner, the 3 of 9, 13 yards throwing here in the second half. Let's go down to Holly Rolls on the field. Coach Minner, obviously you didn't start the second half to how you'd like. 23 total yards. What do you have to do offensively in the, in the fourth? Well, we just got to get back to what got us here, and that's running our four basic running plays, throwing the ball effectively with number seven. And uh, Marshall has something to do with this right now. Uh, they put the quietus on us, if you will. But uh, we've, we've been down before, and we've rallied before, and that's what we fully intend, intend to try to do now. Thanks, Coach. I tell you, I've learned all kinds of words here tonight. Quietus and semi, uh, <laughs> semi, what was that? Semi-quiet, <laughs> semambler. <laughs> sleepy. <laughs> yeah, sleepy. Cincinnati's been sleepy here in the, in the second half. And Rick Mitchell's exactly right. He has to get his team to start doing those things that got him here. That's throwing the football. Three and seven throwing the football to David Ford, but it was incomplete. And Leftwich thought he had himself a first down completion. Another ball that should have been caught by David Foy, and Leftwich puts this ball right between the three and the seven. This is a well-thrown football, and he has to come down with that catch. So a couple of drops hurting Marshall in this game. Curtis Head in to punt for the fifth time, but only the first time here in the second half. Antonio Chapman is standing on his 11 to receive the ball. You know, Pam, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, at the end of the third, you know, the Cincinnati bench put those four up, but there was no emotion. They didn't look each other in the eye. They're not ready to, to play this fourth quarter. Head punt goes out of bounds. It's going to be marked at the six. Will Cincinnati come back in this football game? Deontay Kenner tries to lead him when we come back. Responsive Chrysler Sebring Performance Sedan. Proof that it's not the destination, it's the drive. Now, we the Chrysler Sebring LX Sedan for $259 a month.
never has so much power gone into our batteries. Introducing Duracell Ultra. With new M3 technology, it's the most powerful alkaline battery in the world. Bosch Platinum Plus 4. Four electrons. Pure platinum. Take your engine to a higher power. Bosch Platinum Plus 4. ESPN's Full Court brings you over 450 games of the top schools from the biggest conferences. You won't see anywhere else. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Welcome back. The fourth quarter is indeed underway here at the Motor City Bowl. Marshall doing all the damage here in the second half. And, Don, you mentioned you know, the players putting up the four fingers yeah. for the fourth quarter for Cincinnati, but there's not a lot of emotion. That's you right. don't see Kenner getting in people's faces. Where's the leader? Exactly. When we came back, Kenner was kind of sitting there with his head down, sitting on the bench. He's got to get up and, you know, kick somebody in the shins, you know. This is, this is the town of Bobby Lane. Bobby Lane would get up and kick somebody in the shins. He certainly would, at least in the shins. For Michael McCluskey gets the handoff, a hole that is quickly eaten up by George Miller, who comes in to make the tackle. Now, has Cincinnati had fourth quarter comebacks? Of course they have. They've overcome four of them in five games, and they won four of them, eventually lost the other in overtime. So this is a team that has shown the ability to, to get emotional and come back and win. And I'm going to keep repeating this, out. unless they start to show some emotion, that's not going to happen. This is a Marshall team that, that's been in this game before. They know how to finish the ball game off. McCleskey, two straight carries as he makes a nifty cut inside to pick up the first down. George Miller again on the stop, and McCleskey rather quiet here in the second half so far. Gets two carries and a first down. The Maple Leafs and the Penguins, Mario Mew's first game back from retirement. Uh, will follow us eventually on ESPN, but uh, from the opening puck, drop you can watch it on espn 2 at 7 30 eastern time so if you're uh, anticipating that about 14 or so minutes from now you have our permission to flip over the picture in picture is a wonderful feature mccleskey three straight carries now on this drive and he is met by michael owens danny derricott also coming up to make the stop only a one yard gain on that play so very conservative now starting deep in their own territory here in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati had to be careful that they don't do what, what they did again in the third quarter, and that's put themselves in their own territory in that third and long situation. And they're very close to doing it now. They gained two big games on with, with the run game. They need to start opening this game up offensively. And they have the steps to do it. They have three receivers out to the right, and McCleskey is split in a wide receiver position on the left side. Kenner. Looking right the whole way, going downfield, and that is incomplete, intended for Ty Keith. Michael Owens again meeting the quarterback. Kenner has seen a lot of that guy in this game. Kenner at the end of this play is going to take another hit. It's just a, another hit that time by Michael Owens coming up right in his face. Michael Owens again known as a vicious hitter and he has shown it for this entire game. He is the one who had a safety back in the first half. He also has a sack, a lot of hurries, and that was a hurt that he put on Kenner. He has five tackles so far and a lot of hits. And here they are, third and long, right where they don't want to be. Third and nine to be exact. Kenner rolling right, looking left, and he throws it right to Derricott with the interception and Derricott escapes Chapman, reverses field. Gets a good block from Hines and falls down at the 25. And it looked like Kenner had no one with the white shirt in that area, Don. And Pam, that goes back to that forward lateral earlier in this game. A costly mistake. It's a mental mistake. Team is starting to press. Cincinnati is starting to press. And this time, Kenner with no one on that side of the football field. He has one guy in the pattern with all this protection. Everything is going the other way. And Keith is nowhere, excuse me, Chapman is nowhere to be found 
there was no one within 10 yards of Derricott. Derricott known as a big play guy. He only had three interceptions this year. His last one, though, sealed the MAC title win against Western Michigan earlier this month. Turnovers now square to two apiece. And Marshall gets it back in terrific field position. Well, the pump fake left with then gets it out to David Ford. Short of the first down as he is stopped around the 21-yard line by Dewan Gossett. And then the first interception that Kenneth threw was just, it was a short throw. It was a bad throw. It wasn't a bad decision. The second one, this one was a bad decision. He clearly had no play to that side of the football field, threw it blindly. And when your mental game breaks down in the fourth quarter, it's very difficult to win football games. Five-yard pass play. Makes second and five now for Leftwich. He hands it off to Franklin Wallace, and Wallace gets little to nothing. Evans among those coming up to make the stop, along with Kirk Thompson. Again, in the first half, not spectacular, but rather efficient, but in the second half, it's been close to a disaster. And what a huge drop-off right now for Kenny. He has that look on his face, confusion, frustration. He doesn't seem like he's talking to anyone right now upstairs, which means that maybe the answers aren't coming. It's just a matter of execution and playing disciplined football. And right now, Cincinnati is not playing with emotion. Joe Daniels is the offensive coordinator upstairs, and he probably was talking to his men are calling the plays from the sidelines on offense. Leftwich just, just gets it off in time. Third and six, and he goes down. Stopped in the backfield by number 25, Isaac Thomas. Thomas starting every game this year, splits time with Antonio Davis at that outside linebacker position, making the big play. And J.R. Jenkins is going to come in, and he will attempt a long field goal. His career long and season long is 44 yards. This one will be just short, officially 43 yards away. Andy Cowan is his holder. Gets the spot down, Jenkins kicks is no good at the distance but not the accuracy so we stay at 22 to 14 cincinnati for all that's been going on here in the second half they're still only down by a touchdown and a two-point conversion as jenkins misses this field goal Outgun Colorado State's Matt Newton and his talented core of receivers. Colorado State versus Louisville, Friday at 1.30 on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2000 Motor City Bowl is brought to you by Bet, a beer apart, and by Bosch Platinum Plus 4. Take your engine to a higher power. Putting the cars together here in the uh, greater Detroit area. This is first Motor City Bowl. Cam Ward, Don McPherson, and Holly Rowe joining you. 
as we play now in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati getting the football back, only down by eight. Ray Jackson now is the running back. A little play action as Kenner, though, gives it to Jackson on the short pass. And Jackson is dragged down just over the 35-yard line. Second down coming up for the Bearcats. Many more balls yet to come on Saturday. Damian Anderson and number 19 Northwestern takes on Eric Kraut in the big red of the Big 12. You got it. That's Nebraska. Pennsylvania Alamo Bowl. Cover starts at 8 Eastern time on ESPN. Coming up this Saturday. Now that should be a fun football game. What a season Northwestern has had. We had a chance to see them a couple times this year. What an exciting offense with Zach Eastock and Damian Anderson. But They've got a big test ahead of them with Nebraska. Got all that flash going against the power of Nebraska as Jackson powers his way to a first down. Picking up four, Paul Toviesi coming up to make the stop. His seventh tackle. Toviesi, as I mentioned earlier, a big, long, lengthy guy, but the way you, you beat a guy like that is to go right at him because he doesn't have that power to take on the, the direct blocks, and he's done a a good job at the point of attack, fighting off blocks and still making tackles. Toby Essie, 6'7", 255. He has an interception earlier this year. Getting a 6'7 frame up to make it. First down, more play action. Kenner going out to J.R. Deathridge, his tight end. And Deathridge is stopped around the 47-yard line of the Bearcats. to move the ball. Let's go back down to Holly Rowe. Guys, the Cincinnati bench has been such a contrast. The defense right now is very confident and calm. Their heads are all up. They seem like they're very focused and appreciate what they're doing right now in this game. The offense, however, before they took the field for this series, had a very desperate feel, avoiding each other's eyes, not talking to each other. It's almost as if something, if something positive doesn't happen on this drive, they're really going to give it in. They do seem to be like a team. Really, the entire second half has been playing with desperation, not necessarily making good decisions. Kenner just gets it off before the play clock expires, and he gets it to Deathridge again, this time for a first down. And J.R. Deathridge coming into this football game had no catches on the season. He's got two of them right here on this series. You know, Holly Rowe makes a great point about if they don't get something done now, you can pretty much write them off because they have to get some momentum going. They did absolutely nothing in the third quarter. They've come out with a lackluster performance so far in the second half, and the time is picking. It is eight, under eight and a half minutes left in this ball game, and Marshall has momentum, so Cincinnati must do something now. And Jackson doing something. Max Yates drags him down, but not before Ray Jackson is inside the 40. And the fans here on the Cincinnati side of the uh, Silverdome starting to get excited. Haven't had a lot to cheer about here in the second half. Yeah, the biggest thing they've had to cheer, cheer about was that missed field goal. And there's Rossville right now. This is the guy, again, he's a one of those leaders, there he is, cutting on, cutting Beckett in the middle. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to have to step up on that offensive line as a leader and get this team going. He's a senior all-conference USA first team for two straight years. He's the 34th straight start at center for the Bearcats. Second and two. As Michael Owens comes in from the blind side and drags down Kenner. Two sacks for Owens. That was a big one. And the play fake didn't slow Owens down one bit. Decent blocking up front, but here comes Owens off the corner. Not slowed down by the play fake. And Kenner taking his time, not getting to the corner very quickly. Easy play for Owens. Remember, if you want to see the Maple Leafs and the Penguins at 7.30 Eastern time, it will be on ESPN2 until the conclusion of this game. And then it will switch back to ESPN. And there's a Owens fan. Kool-Aid, remember is his nickname. Third sack by Marshall. Cincinnati allowed only 15 during the regular year. That pass is complete to Robert Drury. Short of the first down, however, on a third and 12. Not even close to a first down. Well, all Marshall has to do is keep the receivers in front of them. Don't let them get down the field and put quick pressure on Kenneth. Get, make him get rid of the ball quickly. That does not allow his receivers to get the depth they need for the first down. Smart defensive call by Marshall. And on fourth and five, Bob Pruitt is joining his troops because Cincinnati is going to go for it. Cincinnati 
two for two on fourth down this game. Well, Hollywood Road knew what she was talking about when she said they had to get something done this drive. Fourth and five, they haven't done much. This is a bold call. This could be a big game for Cincinnati. Tanner, looking at it, it's almost picked off by Crocker. As Crocker stepped in front of Van, the intended receiver, and Marshall will get the football back. And once again, Marshall putting the pressure on Tanner, forcing him in the shotgun to make a quick throw. And Jimmy Parker, the nose tackle, coming in, pressuring him, almost another interception, but just as well for Marshall, they get the ball back. push the button, you pick the hit. This December, the movies you want are in demand on AT&T Digital Cable. Big Mama be here. Get the hits you want delivered home. In demand on AT&T Digital Cable. Just a bit of magic, oh, it's got to be The light, the unexpected, one big leap to test it High definition television, made possible Wee! by Panasonic Oh, just a bit of magic Hi, I'm David Orrick How'd you like to get this $30 car back absolutely free? Call this number now and try my amazingly light, incredibly powerful 8-pound Oric XM. Call 1-888-383-4000. Go behind the scenes with the North Penn Knights. What? What? What's your excuse? Follow their quest for the Pennsylvania State High School Football Championship. Let's win this game! Our dreams are shattered! The season. This is where we find out if this is a championship ball club or not. This critically acclaimed two-part documentary Documentary takes you inside the world of high school football. Why don't you just hit them? Why? Don't miss the season, which airs in its entirety Saturday at 4.30 on ESPN2. Welcome back to the Motor City Bowl. These guys check their TV guide. Sports Center indeed is not next. And yes, they love Linda Cohn. Tony happy to get some pubs. Hockey game starting right now on ESPN2, the Penguins and the Maple Leafs, and that will be next year when we are finished. Franklin Wallace getting the ball, a first down carry, and he stays in bounds after picking up between four and five, and National Hockey Night is indeed next, and right now you can see it on ESPN2. Mario Lemieux coming back to play for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Sam, so many people know about how effective the shotgun is for a quarterback to be able to see the secondary. But on that last play, Crocker was able to break on the ball because he was reading the quarterback and there was no drop by Kenny. Crocker was a terrific hurdler, third best high school hurdler in the country three years ago. Still runs track at Marshall. Great athlete and made a terrific play to get the ball back on fourth down. Wallace breaks the tackle and runs for another first down. Gain of six for Ivan Fields makes the stop on Wallace, the sophomore. Doing a lot of work here. We expect to see him get even more work as Marshall tries to cement what would be yet another win. There, it would be their third overall and they play here in the Motor City Bowl. They won last year, they won the year before that, lost to Ole Miss back in 97. Their only other bowl came back in 1948. You remember it well, Don, the Tangerine Bowl. Marshall, Marshall shut out by a strong Catawba club. Seven and <laughs> yeah, Catawba was tough in the 40s, I remember. Yeah, their defense was real tough. Yeah. But since then, Marshall obviously spending time at the 1AA level where they had tremendous success as Wallace gets another carry for about a one-yard game. Bond's making the stop. And the Motor City Bowl has belonged to them since they came back to Division 1A football in 1998. Marshall beat Louisville. Jack Pennington, four touchdowns, 411 yards through the air. The MVP, Marshall scored on eight of its final 10 possessions, winning it 48 to 29. <laughs> Oh, Pruitt looks like a turtle at times. He's kind of, <laughs> kind of shrink his head into his shoulders. Wallace 
once again getting the carry stopped just short of the 45-yard line of Cincinnati. About a one-yard gain, and that will bring up a big third down for Marshall. Timeout taken now by the Bearcats, trying to preserve some time to come back in this game. And we mentioned that Bob Pruitt was a high school coach at Groveton High School in Northern Virginia. He actually was portrayed in the movie Remember the Titans because T.C. Williams was the team they played, and he said that the, uh, the gripe he had was that the uh, actor who played him was fault was fat bald and grumpy yeah and i saw a photo of him at the time and he at least was not bald <laughs> but uh pruitt with a terrific sense of humor as uh you take a look at what marshall has done under him he succeeded jim donnan who went on to georgia division one double a champions unbeaten in his very first season in charge third coach to do so in the first year to go unbeaten and then they went unbeaten a couple of years later. And Pruitt has really done a terrific job of maintaining this program. So it's third and eight now. Deontay Kenner hoping to get another shot. The team has been totally shut down here in the second half. Cincinnati had a 14 to nine lead at the break. And since then, Marshall has simply played like a team that has indeed been here several times before. Third and eight. Leftwich has Franklin Wallace to his left. A look to throw. Avoids the blitz. And Wallace is cut down nicely. A terrific tackle by LeVar Glover coming up from his corner position. And Marshall has to punt the ball away. That's a good read by Glover. Good decision to come up hard on that play. And in the open field, Wallace is up. You see Kula looking back inside. He needs to be looking outside. And pick up that corner. Those corners are easy to block by the offensive line that they see them. Glover is the best 40, uh, timed in the 40 at 4-4-2 on this team. He started every game this year. Senior class president back in high school, Jefferson High School in Dayton, and he makes a big play there. Curtis Head back to punt. Angling again for the sideline. Chapman trying to let it go, and he does get it out of bounds. Good coffin corner stuff for Head as that's going to be marked around the eight-yard line. Big series coming up for Cincinnati, and they go 92 yards to try to tie it. Seven thousand times a day, 685 times an hour, once every six seconds, a GM owner puts their stamp of approval on the quality of our cars and trucks by coming back to buy another GM. It's the ultimate expression of loyalty. And to us, the ultimate compliment. Yes. One more time. But it's something I'm serious. Sure, this place for a buck. I'm not that serious. Guy, a dollar isn't serious. Then you must not know about 10, 10, 2, 20. Remind me. Stop 10, 10, 2, 20. All calls up to 20 minutes, 99 cents. Just seven cents a minute after that. It's got to be a monthly fee. <laughs> no. In that case, I'll shoot for a buck. Can you do that? Too short. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. Arm strength, quickness, agility, and body control. The essential elements of the winning defensive baseball player. And with Coach Yamansky's Defensive Drills video, you'll learn the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school. The Defensive Drills video features revolutionary training techniques developed by professional scout and instructor Tommy Yamansky. Techniques that get results, producing baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams and even a gold medal in international competition. In a recent review, Collegiate Baseball Magazine explained, with Coach Jimansky's techniques. The future of baseball is here today. Even top professional players are impressed. Just ask Major League Superstar Fred McGriff. I'm so impressed with the instructional videos by Coach Jimansky that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. The Defensive Drills video is available now for immediate shipping. It makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy, call toll-free 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. Call now. Welcome back to the Motor City Bowl. Cincinnati getting the ball back with 3.02 left to go. And that's a distinguished Marshall cheerleading squad. Yeah, and, and Pam, this young lady right here, her name is Natalie. She told us last night that 
the cheerleading team has done something that the football team has never done. They beat Florida State in a cheerleading competition. Pretty good stuff. They take yeah. their cheerleading very seriously down there, as well as their football in Florida. Ball is snapped away. That's Danny Derricott getting high up in the air to knock down that Deontay Kenner pass. Cincinnati right now, under three minutes left to go. Still looking for their first score here in the second half. If Derricott tips this ball up just a little bit, more like a volleyball. Great. No, those are fluffy up. Now, those are fluffy up. He, he <laughs> got up in the air, yeah. And if, if Miller got his head around, he could have caught that ball and took it in for a score. And right now, I, I, if I were Don Meredith, I would sing out that song, Turn Out the Lights, because Cincinnati is just demoralized. They're still technically alive, obviously. Kenner gets it swatted down again, this time right in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Toby Espy got his hands up there. Ralph Street was right in the middle. And, and there's no reaction from the Cincinnati team. They, they're dropping their hands that time when the, the first ball got tipped. Chapman just kind of walked around with his head up in the air. This time, Kenner, there's just no reaction from these guys. You know, that's my, that's my way of saying these guys have given up. They're just not trying to make this run with three minutes left. They put together some drives in this ball game. It's not because they can't do it. I think at this point right now, they just don't know how to get it done. And Kenner's numbers continuing to fall by the wayside. Third and ten. From his own nine-yard line. Chapman in motion. Kenner looking for Van. He gets it. Avoids Crocker's tackle and is going to be stopped very close to the first down marker. Ralph Street coming up to make the tackle. Good effort that time by Chapman because if Crocker would have gotten him, he would have been well short of the first down. Yeah, and that's what they need. They need somebody like Dan or somebody who hasn't done much this whole ball game who gets a shot to make something happen and give them a spark. There's still plenty of time left in this football game for them to go down the field. It's fourth and one, actually less than a yard, but officially fourth and one. So here's Cincinnati's last chance to stay in the game. And some movement on the left side of the line for Cincinnati. Sean Murphy, the big left tackle, number 70 up, 78, raised up a little bit early. There was some uh, movement on the right side of the defensive line for Marshall, but they can do that. Right to snap. Both sides on the offense. Five yards. Still down. Sean Murphy doing uh, the movement, the transfer from Michigan State. They may have even have been Doolin, yep. the Kurt. left guard who moved yep. before Murphy. Yep. Kurt Doolin did move before Murphy, who clinched afterwards. So now from a fourth and one to a fourth and six. defender this time Farden Carter getting his hands on the football and Marshall will get it back three times in this game Curtis had punted Cincinnati inside the 10 first time they got a safety second time an interception and now they turn it over on down and that Marshall defense is reading the eyes and the body of Deontay Kenner that's why they're getting these blocks especially out of the shotgun he's telegraphing his throws and it's giving these guys the ability to time their throws eyes all the way again fluffy, fluffy up, up and great eyes all the way on kenner knowing exactly when he's going to release that football and getting their hands on the on, on the ball martin carter another washington dc area kid he's from columbia maryland and now franklin wallace is going to try to just run the clock out Marshall University, a team that a lot of people left for dead, started out two and four this season with a brand new starting quarterback in Byron Leftwich, winning five of their last six, including the MAC championship game and probably against Winston, Michigan, a team that beat them by 20 on their home turf earlier in the year. And this is one resilient team, Don. They certainly are. And, and you know, like, looking at the MAC conference, you know, I feel like Toledo and Western Michigan, but especially Toledo, was denied opportunities to play in a bowl game at 10 and 1. Marshall gets in by winning the MAC conference into this game and has proven that they belong here, obviously. It's an impressive win here tonight. They just stuck around all day long. 
not getting down, not getting discouraged when Cincinnati definitely came out with a little bit more fire. But Marshall hung in there the entire game and has proven why they, they've been the champion of this game for the past three years. And Rick Cripps, who is the commissioner of the MAC Conference, has talked about perhaps revamping this so that Marshall or the, you know, a team that does finish 10-1 and one like Toledo, maybe they would be the choice to come in, but that begs a lot of questions. Like, why play the MAC Championship game in the first place if the champion doesn't have a place to go? Exactly, no question about it. And they also have to move the MAC Championship game out of Marshall, out, out of Huntington, West Virginia, and, and spread it around. Maybe go to a neutral site and, and, and spread it around and give some other teams the opportunity. The other thing for the MAC Conference is that out of, out of conference games, or the other division of the conference game don't count. And that's what saves Marshall. Exactly. Byron Leftwich is our Capital One player of the game for his terrific contributions, particularly here in the second half at that 77-yard touchdown pass in the first half, and has been a big leader here in the second half. Franklin Wallace with that carry, and they got the bucket ready, Don. There's they, a lot of ice in there. Yeah, and they got the sticky stuff, too. He's going to be shower and smell like... That green line stuff for a long time. Going to ruin that nice white shirt and sweater. Marshall about to sew up yet another Motor City Bowl victory here in Pontiac. Give your walls a new look for the new year with Dutch Boy paint from Menards. Dirt Fighter Flat is on sale just $10.99 a gallon. Semi-gloss $14.99 a gallon. Get a lifetime of beauty with Moen bath faucets. All on sale. This sleek looking model is just $59. This model with polished brass accents is $89. Plus, take 10% off everything, even sale prices, when you use your Menard Big Cut. Save big money at Menard. Can't find the right car for you? Shop vehic.com. Want access to a half million used cars? vehic.com. Lease or purchase? vehic.com. Or do side-by-side -side comparison? vehic.com. Need to find the right local dealer? vehic.com. Find the right car for you? vehic.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. When I buy books or need information, I surf the internet. But when it comes to my investments and retirement money, I want my account handled by a real person. Someone who is accountable and has years of experience. Someone right here in Chicago, and I have a first name relationship with. That's why I trade with Levitt and Levitt. Wherever I go, it's just a toll free call for an immediate response from a familiar and qualified broker. And the rates are great, too. Just pennies per share for stock trades. Levitt and Levitt. Deal with real people and save real money. And welcome back to the Motor City Bowl. Third and four now for Marshall. About to sew up yet another win. What has become a, a yearly gathering for their fans here in Pontiac. Franklin Wallace goes up the middle. Looks like he will be stopped just short of the first down by Eddie Johnson. They want to celebrate here. Yeah, and, and they want to celebrate, and they want to dump the bucket of Gatorade. See? But this guy right here, uh, he told them, you can't dump the Gatorade on the field because you're going to mess up the, the, the field here in Pontiac and the Silver Dome. And, yeah. and so now he's spared. Now, of course, the Lions are not in the playoffs. We actually have a, an injured player down on the turf for... Cincinnati. The Lions aren't in the playoffs, so this place, I don't believe, Don, will be used for a few yeah, months. Exactly. I mean, what's the big deal? He does it right over that Motor City Bowl sign, and uh, it gives him a chance to clean that stuff off a little quicker. Look at him. Look at that. He's saying, you can't do this, and I'm pouring it out, and you, if, even if you're thirsty now, you're going to have to go dry because you know, it's like being in the third grade and getting caught with the juicy juice that you're not supposed to have after research. <laughs> I'm pouring this out, and now no one gets right. any. As an example exactly. to all. Exactly. Now no one gets juicy juice. Well, that's juice. a rather Grinch-like thing to yeah, do. Wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah, the Grinch would have gotten that. Yeah. And again, those of you watching us, Toronto at Pittsburgh, the return of Mary Lemieux will follow on ESPN. Right now, you can see it on ESPN2, the festivities underway in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as they're happy to have Super Mario back at the age of 35. Isaac Thomas is the injured player who is being escorted, helped off the field. He's able to put a little bit of uh, weight on his, on his feet, now walking much better. Yeah, it's definitely not the way you want to end the season with a loss in the bowl game and coming up hobbled and having to go through rehab the whole, whole off season. And happy he had a chance to get up and walk off. 
So fourth and one now. Marshall going to hang on to it and go for it. Hold on to the football. They played a very inspired second half. Byron Leftwich with a one-yard touchdown run. Franklin Wallace running it out from four yards out. On 41 and 56-yard drives, respectively. All the scoring here in the second half. It has been all Marshall. Fourth down. And Leftwich steps away. More flags coming in. Well, Leftwich, I think, wants to set a record for the number of flags thrown in the Motor City Bowl. And I don't think they quite had that record yet, so he tried to draw them off sides there. Frag to the snap. Both sides on the offense. Five yards, still fourth down. Yeah, and that's Joseph Ryder, our referee there, who has the record for most calls in a bowl game. <laughs> And Marshall was the most penalized team in the MAC this year. The most penalties came. They got 14 called against them in Buffalo. Against Buffalo, a new season high, 15 Ooh. penalties. And how about that? 15 penalties, a couple of uh, turnovers, and they're still going to win this game. Not pretty, but certainly effective for Marshall. Now fourth and six, and a field goal attempt for J.R. Jenkins. Trying to really salt this away. It'll be a 25-yarder. Jenkins missed from 43 earlier, and that one looks good, and it is. So J.R. Jenkins extends the Herb's lead now to 25 to 14. now 43 seconds away from coming away with their third straight win in the Motor City Bowl. The first thing is this game was with all the mistakes and all the, the penalties. Bob Pruitt can be happy that his team has put this game away. There's less than a minute left. But that's more than that touchdown and a two-point conversion. Now they have to score twice in order to, to win the game and much less tie it and possibly send it into overtime. That possibility is gone. <laughs> With 43 seconds left to go. Trip from Huntington to Silverdome cost them only 100 bucks. That's pretty good. 38 bucks to get in, getting on ESPN. Priceless. Way to go, guys. I like that one. And they're on. High fives all the way around for these really Terrific fans, many of them staying in our hotel here. They well behaved, they had a little cheerleading competition, alumni uh, meeting last night, and now more stuff to be happy about. The thundering herd. One way or another, continue to be the class of the Mac. And it really is a shame, as you mentioned earlier, that Toledo is not in at 10 and 1. Gary Tinkle now going from Toledo to Missouri as their head coach, so Toledo has to retool. But boy, did he leave behind a terrific program. And I definitely think Toledo not getting into the bowl game was the reason why Gary Pinkle left. What more can the coach do? He brings his team to 10-1. They shut out Marshall. And yet, still no bowl game. Ray Jackson to get the J.R. Jenkins kickoff. And he is dragged down at the 22. Only 35 seconds left to go here. A lot of uh, coaching changes, obviously, around the country this year. Bowling Green getting a new head coach as well. I'm talking to trash. They say he's going to do it. That's what's his right arm and his two legs do the talking today, that's for sure. Remember, he's only a sophomore. The Bob Pruitt, a terrific foundation, does lose some of these terrific senior receivers. Darius Watts will be back. A lot of these guys trying to remember this moment. Happy moment for these guys here in Pontiac, Michigan. Five receivers now for Cincinnati. It's all desperation time. Kenner, short ball thrown out to Jason Collins Baker, who gets the first down and steps out of bounds at the 34 yard line. Look at Pruitt. He's, he's not stopped. You're up by 11, but he's still telling his guys to think and, and just finish this game. Well, that's why his team comes back to this bowl game every year because he doesn't stop coaching. I don't care. If the game is a foregone conclusion at this point, do not stop coaching and do not let your players let down in any way. On first down, Kenner looking for Ty Keith. He finds him. 
keeps the clock running as a good stop made there by Farden Carter to keep him inbound. And Pam, let me take you back to the end of the first half because this is exactly the same way that Cincinnati ended the first half with no sense of urgency. And it's exactly the way they're ending the football game, and that's when it started at the end of the first half. Another knockdown as well streak. We've seen that so often here in the second half. The defensive line five times now. We've seen tip passes here in the second half as the Marshall defense has come up very large, shutting out this Cincinnati ball club in the second half. Bob Pruitt getting congratulations. And the test. <laughs> Good job by Leftwich to dribble him. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a little streak. A little streak on the back. Just enough to be embarrassing. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough to mess up his hair. <laughs> Jason Collins Baker gets the catch on what will be the final play. Pitch it. As he pitches it back to Ladarius Van, Van is taken down, and that will end the football game. Marshall takes it 25 to 14. Don McPherson, Holly Rowe, our entire crew. Thanks for watching the Motor City Bowl as Marshall wins again, this time 25 to 14, playing well here in the second half. Let's go back to Bristol now and Bristol. Pam, thanks, and congratulations to the Thundering Herd, and a uh, big downer for that. Great opportunity, great opportunity. Welcome, Bob and Show. Boise State, Bart Hendricks, threw more touchdown passes than anyone else in Division I.